awesome. That's I'm, I'm glad I did it. Didn't even know that, but that's sick. So, um, so yeah, guys, be on the lookout for that. I'm sure it'll be pinned up at the top. But a couple more stories, I'll roll through them. So I have Toyota announced that they're going to um, invest $3.4 billion on automated batteries in the U.S. through 2030. So, you know, this is really for EVs. They're trying to boost up their local production. Um, you know, if you didn't already know it or believe it, EVs seem like the uh, the clear-cut future for the industry. Um, I'm seeing Alibaba also is planning to make their own semiconductor chips uh, for cloud servers. So uh, I think this has kind of been an underlying theme. We've been seeing a lot these major, major companies coming in. Uh, and, and trying to uh, vertically integrate a little bit more and take a little bit more control of their supply chains. Uh, yeah, this is definitely sparked by the semiconductor shortage, but uh, I'm sure this would have happened eventually. You know, these, these large companies do like to have the control. Uh, another thing that I saw this morning was Coinbase. This is another NFT thing. Their NFT launch uh, marketplace, which is currently uh, being built out, they have a wait list out, and it now has over 2.3 million people on the wait list. Uh, which is a pretty huge number for the NFT space. Um, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I believe OpenSea is somewhere in the 300K uh, account range, or maybe that's like actively, um, um, you know, accounts that are being active over over a month. But just the number of people that are interested on in this on Coinbase is, is pretty huge. Yeah, the waitlist is about 2.35 million people actually. Uh, on the thing, when you do sign up, they do say that they expect it to come later this year, uh, but we'll, we'll see uh, if it actually comes. It seems like we're, we're in a period of a lot of delays, not necessarily just with Coinbase, but across every single industry. So, I mean, my, my base expectation is probably early next year, but we'll see. Um, Adam Aaron came out this morning and said that AMC, uh, in the first two weeks of October, brought in $300 million in domestic box office sales. This is their highest number since February 2020. Uh, so, you know, you could see the uh, the COVID trends uh, or the trend during COVID starting to pick up a little bit. But it definitely is important to realize that this is still down pretty big from pre-pandemic numbers, as you would expect. But, um, yeah, so, so it's an interesting recovery, uh, a pandemic recovery. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, it is still down pretty, pretty big. Um I, I do exclusive. I do see your hand up. I'm going to get to one more story and then, and then come to you with this, but uh, and, and we'll keep going. But Google actually said today that they're going to work with the NBA to create fan experiences. They're planning to use their 3D and AR technology, uh, and they plan to uh, announce a bunch of new features like along this and kind of maybe flesh it out a little bit more of what this is going to look like tomorrow at their Pixel launch event. So that's just another thing to be on the lookout for that. Uh, but exclusive, I see your hands up. Yeah, no, I was going to um, address the um, DraftKings. So, ironically, the news comes out at a pivotal moment on this major, major uptrend from April of 2020. So, it's coming out right at the base, right when the MACD on the daily crosses, and right at the bottom of this channel. So, this is a really, we posted a chart too. Um, so, this is a really, really um, pivotal moment for it. So, you're basically getting in right at the bottom at this point. So, and then with earnings right around the corner too, so in a couple of weeks. Very interesting. No, listen, our earnings are going are gonna to move these stocks so much. I, I feel like right now, DraftKings, their company is 100% a, a sports bidding company, and this NFT marketplace is a nice call option uh, at this point. It's, it's definitely grown into something small and not insignificant, but... You know, there, there definitely is a future. It has a long, long way to go before it becomes a significant part of, of you know, the company, the growing sports betting company. But it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. So I'm going to keep it moving. I have a couple more stories in front of me. Amazon, they plan to hire 40K new full corporate tech workers along with 125K new full and part-time fulfillment and transportation jobs. This was announced this morning. Uh, they kind of announced it. You know, throughout different states, they were looking to hire like 4K in one state, 5K in another state. That's kind of how the way they do it. Um, we'll see how, how they are with, with getting workers. Amazon in the past has really had no problem bringing in workers. Their problem is retaining them over time. Uh, you, you guys, I feel like Amazon is one of the poster boys for, you know, they do have really, really great compensation relative to, to what they're doing. It's just, you know, everything else. Uh, the environment, the hard work, everything like that. 
um, that tend to be their problems. But we'll, we'll see how they are at, at bringing in people. Uh, I posted this on the, the Bullish Rippers account yesterday, which is actually up here, the Green Raccoon. Um, but uh, Brian, who, who was a part of that account, was at Six Flags yesterday, and they had to shut down some of the rides at parts of the day because they didn't have enough workers to, to, uh, to make them all go. So it, it's just a, an interesting dynamic we have with the labor re- market right now. We'll see how Amazon does at hiring a bunch of employees. I do see we're getting close to 930. I want to roll through one or two more quick stories. Facebook said yesterday they plan to hire 10,000 new uh, employees in the EU over the next five years to help build out their vision for the metaverse. So that's a big keyword. We've had some discussions on it in, in other spaces, but Facebook is definitely investing pretty big to, to make it happen. And then one more quick story. Zillow said uh, yesterday that, that they've reached their home flipping capacity for the year, uh, and they're going to hold off buying any more homes for their Zillow offers business, according to Bloomberg. So everyone knows Zillow, the, um, the website you can go on and look at home prices. They do have another segment of their business where they, the company itself, looks to buy and, uh, buy and sell houses, flip them. Uh, and, and this is just saying that they have too much capa- – that they don't have enough capacity. They've already reached their entire lot for, for 2021, so they've, they've had to slow down with new homes in that. But I do see that we are heading right into the open, Gov. Um, I, I'd love to throw it back to you quickly. Yeah, coming into the open right now per WSJ, we are looking at a Dow futures down 0.47%, S&P 500 futures down 0.45%, and the 10-year is also down 1.6%, and oil's up 1%. Oil being up 1% could be good for that gush play um, that I'm holding, and also uh, could be bad for uh, United Airlines, which I see just opened and is down already a uh, couple percent on that. So. Yeah, let's just roll through some of these. All right, um, just so everyone knows. I'm yeah. seeing it right now. It's it's a pretty red open. It's like 20% of stocks are green. If that, maybe 15%. The rest are, are pretty well in the red. So down open. Yeah, we're starting out in the red here. Um, I'm currently holding Snap $79 calls. Uh, they're weekly, so we'll see how that starts out. Snap opened 1.5%, but the calls haven't seemed to have moved. Uh, just yet. Hopefully, they'll start picking up once that gets moving. Um, looking at some of the larger stuff here, Apple down about a percent. Uh, SE, oh, quick shout out to SE. So as I mentioned beforehand, um, I'm giving away uh, NFTs on most of my spaces this week, and you guys carrots on here. I felt like it was aptly fitting to give away an SE NFT, so I launched a project trying to create an overlap between stocks and NFTs. I felt like Everybody's just doing this for, you know, they, they have all their own types of art, but what's my type of art? It's stocks. So we made stock art. So you can check that out. I pinned it up top. Uh, you don't even have to follow the page to enter it. It's just um, like, retweet, and tag three friends. So I'm going to give that away later today. Did one the other day, went really well, and Etsy's a big favorite. Also, Square's down 1.2%. Uh, crowd down. Palantir is slightly up. So I, I'm not seeing it terribly down. I see it decently mixed, at least for growth names. I do see Gush, like I just mentioned, up 4% off the bat as it's flying with oil. Um, it's at 113 now. And, yeah, I mean, those are just some initial thoughts. But I think crypto might be coming back a little bit, too, at this open. Um, just taking a look. Yeah, crypto just did a little bit of a pop. I don't know. I'm basically sitting flat right now at the open, um, which is good because pre-market I was down about a percent and a half. Oh, there we go. Okay, my snap calls just popped. They're up 23%, um, 25%. Those are moving. So uh, I might converse with some of our – yeah, I might converse with some of our speakers and see if we go ahead and take profit on any of that. Um, but, yeah, those are my initial thoughts at the open parrot. I'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts. What are you eyeing today? What's on your radar? Um, yeah, the floor is yours. Hey, thanks, Kev. Um, yeah, I've got about somewhere open about, I don't know, about – 60% red, 40% green. Uh, most of my long-term plays are in the red, you know, 1% or so. And actually, most of my uh, swing trades are looking pretty good. Uh, One Oak and uh, RRC, Rocket, CCJ. So basically, all the utilities and um, petrochemical stuff is uh, is green right now. Uh, really, I'm just kind of watching this week. I still would like, I've got less than 2% cash. So I keep saying for the last two weeks, I want to trim some stuff. But really... Um, the swings keep uh, keep going up, so I'm just kind of watching those pretty close and trimming a little bit as they go. But other than that, just uh, just watching the market. Uh, I think we're still on a bullish run. So if uh, 
if uh, they if the swing plays uh, pop, keep popping, I'll probably keep Grimmett, but uh, just watch him. There's one I wanted to ask, ask you about for a little bit. MGNI. So this was – is it still pretty big in your portfolio? Yeah, it's still like the top uh, – it's in the top ten for sure. Okay. Thoughts on MGNI right now? It's kind of just uh, – I mean, I'm taking a look at it real quick on TrendSpider just so I can look at, like, the chart overall. And it's just been traversing sideways for, what, since May? Not really moving, building out a ton of volume here. Yeah, it's just a huge base right now, around 30, 25, 30. It's, it's been hanging out in that spot for a long time. Um, you know, it, it really ran. It was up almost uh, – uh, it was almost a 10Xer for me uh, from last year, actually from, like, last October or so. Um, and then it, it pulled back about 50% and just been – just been sitting here for several months um i still like it here i think i like the space as you guys know i love uh, ad tech so i think uh you know it just c continues to build this base and once it once it decides to move it's going to move big I, I think so just going to hold it for now. okay yeah sitting on my position as well and then the other one is going to be of course se uh it's had an incredible run the run that seems to be continuing today it's about to hit 360 dollars a share up 12 and a half percent this week up 37 and a half percent on the past three months and yeah, I mean, it's just been a beast. Uh, is it still your top position? Yeah, absolutely. By more than double uh, my top position, and no plans to sell anytime soon. Um, I tell everybody I'm I'm holding until it hits a trillion. When it hits a trillion, I should hit about a million in that uh, on that ticker. So, I'm just planning on holding for a long term. Uh, I like it here still. I I think it could probably pull back a little bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it does during earnings. But you know, I I have no. Uh, no intention of selling for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even look too bad from, uh, you know, people say you just look at a stock. It could be really overextended sometimes. I mean, right now, it just had that pop back on the 13th where it ran up a few percent, but it's not that far off of the 50-day. It's kept continued to bounce off the 50-day, the 21-day. I don't even think it's terribly overextended. It's got nice volume ledge to support it right at that 317 to like 330, 340 area. So, Definitely an interesting one. And then you've been trading more options lately. Uh, what have you been trading with the options? How's that been going? What's been your strategy? Yeah, it's been going really good. Um, I, basically, the the idea with options is just I, I, I use a limited number of um, percentage of my portfolio to, to trade with. And so using options gives me a little bit more um, gives me a little bit more buying power. Um, but it's been going really good. I've basically been using it for swing trades. Uh, when I see something that I like uh, for the short term, you know, a couple months out, um, been looking just at, at underappreciated stuff. You know, the um, the natural gas trade, propane trade going into the winter this year looked good. Uh, Rocket, I just you know kind of came upon it. It's been in my portfolio for a long, or I'm sorry, my watch list for a long time. I traded it back uh, when it popped from like 20 to 40, um, and then it's just been sitting in the watch list for since then. Um, and I just can't believe it was trading that low. So I think it's probably a good trade going into earnings. Um, they, you know, they're a cash machine. So, uh, I, you know, that's that's basically it. Just looking for stuff. I got a net short on right now, or not short, but a couple of puts on net, and it's losing money again today a little bit, which is good for the net holders. I'll probably add a little bit more going into earnings. Um, I kind of I kind of think we have a sell the news event uh, coming up, but we'll see. You know, it's a small bet, but you know, got to play a little bit. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's interesting with Net. Um, I had the pleasure of listening to uh, Muji and Peter actually talk about that one in person um, a week ago. So that was pretty interesting to hear. But I do see where you're coming from. It could definitely be overextended up 64% in the last three months. And this is just a massive, massive pop. So uh, to see the small pullback, is that a swing? Is that like a put that you're like putting on there for just a week or two through earnings? Yeah, absolutely. I got it to January just because I like playing a little further out, so I don't have to worry about paying that too much. Um, but yeah, it's definitely just a couple of weeks through earnings, um, short term play. Uh, I I still like net long term. I'm not trying to bet against net. Uh, I think it's a great company. Awesome. And then also Parrot. Um, obviously, you had your newsletter. Um, you put out an interesting uh, art or I guess issue of your newsletter. Um, do you want to tell everyone for a second kind of what your newsletter is and what you write about? Yeah, sure. Appreciate it. Um, so basically, just week to week, I just write about what what's on my mind, talking about basic uh, earnings things, uh, thought processes. Um, I talk a little bit about some specific stocks, but mostly about you know how to trade your account or how I trade my account, um, kind of my thought process, what I do for uh, due diligence, things like that. Awesome. And for anybody who's unfamiliar, Parrot uh, transparently trades a million dollar account just out in the open. 
um, puts all that out there on a daily basis with screenshots so you can just see his positions and everything. So I find it really interesting to read his newsletter to get kind of the behind the scenes of how that account got built up and, you know, what his processes are. And we even talked about, I think, like mental health with trading this past week, right? Yeah, yeah, mental health was uh, was a big one. It's one that comes up quite a bit, uh, especially on big red days, because you know I post every day. So when I have a fifty thousand dollar red day, people always ask about it. You know, how do you handle that? So, um, so yeah, I thought it was a good a good timing for that. We had a couple of weeks of red. Luckily, we've gone back to green, so maybe bad timing on that. But uh, uh, yeah, but that that was kind of the idea. Okay, awesome. Anything else you wanted to add right now? Uh, not really. Just appreciate you having me on. Um, didn't really have a lot to cover this day uh, today, but uh, am in the green now, so up almost a little over half a percent. So looks like it's turning around. Awesome. Well, let's keep it running. Cool. I'm going to keep the ball rolling. And also for anybody who is just joining us, this is our weekly space, myself and Stock Market News. Let me get back up here as co-host. Post this every single Monday at 9.20 a.m. EST. We bring on guests to talk about what they're eyeing, what's going on in the market. We talk about breaking news stories. We're going to go through earnings. And it's just a nice way to get you all started for the week. If you didn't see it yesterday, I posted out a massive graphic. I probably should pin it or something. Um, this has all the spaces I'll be doing this week. I'm going to be posting 11 spaces this week. Um, so that's, if you go on my page, it's not too far back. But, yeah, we have a ton. Today we have 9.20 a.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m. Tomorrow we have 8 p.m. Wednesday, 12, 3, 6 p.m. Those are all EST, so you can see everything for the week. But if you want to be catching just all the spaces covering everything from technicals, fundamentals, social sentiment, growth stocks, value stocks, um, a little bit of everything, just make sure that you are, you know, checking that out on the profile and you can set those up. And I also have a calendar if you don't want to have to keep track of everything. If you DM me your email and say, add me to the calendar, I will add you to the Google calendar. It's completely free. Nobody can see your email and you will never miss a space. You will know exactly when they are on your calendar. Perfect. Okay. Exclusive. I'm going to you, man. Uh, what have you been eyeing? Oh man, that's a long list. That's a long list. Um, so we posted up our triggers this morning. Um, a few of them I've already hit, uh, mainly Tesla. Um, right now I'm just kind of waiting for it. I've already scalped it. Just waiting for it to cool off a little bit. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, right now, let me see here. Sorry. I'm also trying to trade. <laughs> Um, so I'm looking at the VIX. I'm waiting for it to lose a little bit of momentum here um, so I can be a little bit more confident in some of my um, positions in SPY. I'm watching the uh, Qs, looking for it to cross that 369.67 pivot so I can get a little bit more aggressive on some of those. Um, looking at, let's see, looking at IWM, um, the Russell 2000 ETF, I'm waiting for that to kind of cross a little bit more on the MACD on the one minute. Um, it's looking pretty bullish here now. Um, it's tight. The range is tightening. Nasdaq is about to cross. I'm looking for it to cross over 15107.6, so I can get a little bit more aggressive in the Nasdaq. Semis, I am. That's been going. It, it dipped a little bit at the open as expected, but the MACD is cross. It's going back green. Um, it's already uh, back over the open range, so looking good there um, as far as specific names um, some that come to mind that we're already in we swung Amazon from last week we had some thirty three hundred dollar calls we've been holding for a few weeks um, those are up two hundred percent over seven grand a contract um, a firm we swung some 150s those are obviously in the money now um, Facebook is one of our triggers as well we're looking for some continuation as long as it stays above that trigger level we'll be um, pretty much scalping it um, we've already got our swing positions but we're gonna you know we're gonna stay on top of it as long as it stays over 328.34 um, and you know of course next week we've got a lot of we've got a lot of fang names uh, earnings and big tech so we're definitely gonna play the run-up and you know if it if it goes our way which it usually does in October November then we're gonna keep on rolling up every time we get over a certain threshold, we'll roll up to the 330s and we'll roll up to the 335s and just keep the ball rolling. Um, some other names that we're pointing out that weren't really mentioned a lot this week um, or this weekend, I should say, um, was Jazz, J-A-Z-Z. -Z. So Jazz Pharmaceuticals, um, they uh, got a buy at Jeffries. Um, so that was moving pretty good pre-market. We're looking for a move into the daily 50 I'm sorry, the daily 100 and 200 MA. So that's going to be one that we're watching. I know um, KTOS, 
was moving pre-market outside of that falling wedge um, right at the 50. So we're looking for a move um, to the 100, 200 on that one as well. Um, and we're, we're kind of all over the place. We don't really stick to one sector. We're looking at pretty much everything. Um, an interesting setup too, we noticed on the daily for Walmart, a little bit less mentioned, but crossing or touching the uh, 200 MA, we were looking at that one on Friday. And let's see what else we got. Um, of course, everyone was talking about Snapchat, um, really big move on Friday. Um, you know, just like you were saying, it's already moving, it's already working. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's 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 a lot, man. It, the list could keep going, but there's there's a lot of names that are green, and we're just gonna keep looking for a continuation. Got it, got it. Yeah, keeping an eye on some of those names as well. There just seems to be continuous strength. Um, I know with New Tesla, so that's one that if you look at the premiums, there's been some interesting stuff going on there. But essentially, um, I've seen a lot of people that are bullish on Tesla breaking through 900 um, pretty soon. I mean, it's up already 7% this week, 17% on the month, 31% on the three months. Um, I'm still holding Tesla uh, up about 60% on it. And I do see the strength. I mean, it's been running back up to this you know, all-time high. Uh, it has not broken, I don't think, through 900. So it would be an all-time high. Um, you know, obviously post split and then AFRM, that name just continues to absolutely just amaze me um, with, you know, continually just just popping, popping, popping. It's clear that there is an institutional, um, a lot of institutional investment that's coming in here as it continues to set all time highs. Um, I am going to come back to you for maybe a little bit more on some of these names, but Gerg, you're up here. What's going on, man? Yeah, what's up, Wolf? I just sold all of my UPSC right now, so pretty happy about that. Even though it's down about 7.5% today? Yeah, I plan to sell it at 400 bucks, but I missed it there. But then I was there. My average was 115, and I sold most of it at 200, but that's some left. But for now, I'm all out. And I won't buy back above 100 bucks. 100? Yeah. Why is that? I mean, the first time, I think last year, I did my, I plugged the number, that's what I got, so I started to buy back at 115, but do you remember, two earnings back, it jumped to 190, and sold off to 95, 98? Yeah. That's when I bought it, but I sold most of it at 200 bucks, but I kept some for 400 bucks. But I missed my opportunity to sell, right? But do you know what happened with the CNBC guy? Yeah, what does Upstart even do? Wait, yeah, <laughs> yeah what did it do? <laughs> Wait, you're breaking up. Can you repeat that? Okay, I think oh, we're past. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't hear you. My, my earpiece. My earpiece. Uh, okay, so you're selling that Upstart. I'm interested to see. I'm, I'm following pretty closely just to see if there's... um. You know what Jonah does? Obviously, it's a massive position, and I think a lot of people um, look to some of his due diligence and see if he's taking any profit. I, I doubt he's going to, but it's also down 8% today, which is hitting a little yeah, bit hard. Yeah, but UPS, right? I think anyone can tell you their are value, and where do you overspend that, right? I think no one disagrees on that. Gotcha. And, but the buying pressure in that and a firm has been just crazy, right? I think all the money seems to be flowing into these two stocks. Same as net, I think. I think net. So you uh, short net, short net also? No, no, I, I won't short any of them. I never short momentum and meme stocks. Okay, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't. What do you, what's your thoughts on Paris put on net? I mean, I was looking at one fifty and two hundred puts for UPSC. But you only make money, I mean, you make 100% if UPSC goes to 140, so that's very, very unrealistic for December. Like, the ivory is sky high on the put, so not a lot of money to be made on UPSC yeah. going on the uh, <clears throat> short side. How and about... You can, short, you can short the underlying, but the momentum is there right now, so I wouldn't do that. How it's about just, uh, yeah. Gush? You told me on Friday. I yeah, said I was I'm buying, to I'm buying gush, gush, but the momentum still remains in energy yeah, 6 and energy, today, man. So, but I still think Gush closes sub hundred bucks for December. Okay, interested to see. I don't know. Not with it doesn't look like the way that the demand for oil and gas is going, but 
we'll have to we'll have to see. You know, obviously it's pretty volatile with all that leverage. And then talk to me about UAL. So UAL, I plan to double my position, but I will wait for the earnings, right? And I, I and I do plan to sell some calls, like short the calls. Uh, I think a one strike above what my average is there. I'm playing the fifty calls for December, and I will short the fifty five puts for the earnings. Just as a hedge, right? Collect the premium. Nothing happens. I sell, take a loss, put the money back in the call, the fifty calls. Uh, like lowering my risk on this for the earnings. Okay, interesting. But I'm I'm still long. I almost have I think under a thousand calls right now, but by Friday I should have thousand calls for UAL fifty strike seventeen December. So yeah, I'm I'm holding on to that as well right now. So and so you said you would sell the fifty five dollar call. Yep. Same okay. expiry though. Got I mean, it. in so the short term, right? I I can get paid. I like the premium. I might even buy more fifty calls for free. But with that, right, I limit my downside on that. Got it, got it. Evan, anything you're watching? Um, so for me, it's really much more of the headlines that are coming up this week, less like, um, you know, trades and, and technicals and that. So I'm just really watching all the earnings and, and the uh, the events uh, that are coming up. For me today, it's the Apple event. Tomorrow, it's Netflix earnings, a little bit of J&J. Uh, and then Wednesday, it's really big uh, Tesla for me. So, so that's what I, I'm watching going forward. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more after. I don't know if uh, if you and Gerg were done. Yeah, no worries. Just bring it in. I mean, I'm just picking at Gerg on uh, some of these different names. Uh, Gerg, Snapchat. What's your thoughts? I am out of Snapchat. I think I made a lot on the 80 call and 70 calls with you, right? I think. So mm-hmm. usually when I make a lot, I usually tend to stay away for a couple of months. Like usually if in the past, if I play something again and again, I tend to lose. So. Okay. It's and... just something, yeah. But I think Snapchat blows uh, on this quarter again. Like if you use Snapchat right, the number of ads that I've been seeing is almost doubled in the last three or four months. So they're pushing very, very hard. Big, big snap user over there? Yeah, I've been a day one user. Day one. Love it, love it. Um, okay, just so like the Wolf app. Just like the Wolf app. Shout out to the Wolf app real quick. Actually, that's a good point. Um, for everybody who's listening, uh, it's actually my pinned post right now. We started a new thing for the Wolf app. Um, every day, we are having a raffle. All you have to do is make a post in the Wolf app. You don't have to do anything else. It's a free app. It's like FinTwit. It's a whole community. Parrot's on there, Gerg's on there, Evans, everybody's on there, and all you have to do is just make a post. You're instantly entered into a raffle. We do $25 and $50 raffles, just depending on the day. Um, so I highly recommend you hop in there. Again, it is my pinned uh, post. It's also the link in my bio. Uh, we would love it if you join. That's my whole entire job and why I get to be on Twitter all day is to get people to go to the Wolf app. So please, please, please do that. That would be huge to me. And we're also introducing a trading platform on there very soon. I already have it on my phone. It's in beta, but you're going to be able to buy and sell stock and get a couple of perks in those different areas. Yeah, exclusive. Hey, just wanted to point attention to um, CrowdStrike. It's pro- approaching the uh, 0.886 Fib at 283.14. If we break through that, we're going to have some really good move. 285 calls above that can work really well. I'm in those personally. So that is on crowd. I think I'm holding a little bit of crowd. Okay, wow. There's just there's a lot of strength in this market right now. Uh, okay, so we have. Yeah, I've had about 15 swings coming into the open. I've got about 42 positions open. So it's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of strength and a lot of names. Low at all time highs. I mean, we got, you know, there's just a lot. Yeah, I'm seeing that as well. Um, and certainly the oil and gas is the strongest right now that I'm seeing, but. Uh, I'm intrigued actually at this map on Finvis. Doesn't look super great. I mean, showing you know maybe it's maybe it's a little bit delayed. I wonder because it's showing. It's, it's 15 minutes delayed, I believe. The uh, yeah. Yeah, because stuff is definitely coming back into the green. Twitter's up, Snap's up. Uh, let's see what else. The Arc, uh, ARKK slightly up. Tesla's still moving. Uh, um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else that stands out to me. But those names that you pointed out are for sure doing great. You know, Net Crowd. Uh, CLH Celsius, this is one that I bought a little bit more of on Friday as well. I think it's one of the bigger positions in my portfolio now. 
Uh, they just had a nice bump this morning. And just keeping an eye on crypto as well. Bitcoin sitting at 61.425, Ethereum at 37.88. Um, I mean, I'm still basically flat on the day, which I'm fine with because, again, I was down a decent amount pre market. So uh, I haven't placed any trades yet today, but I'm just continuing to keep my eye on this. Sometimes it's uh, a little bit difficult to place the trades and also to moderate. What about SoFi, Gerd? I love SoFi long term, but I have no position right now. I want to I want to be below fifteen bucks to buy in. So, do you think we have a good chance of that happening with it already nearing twenty dollars in the bank charter coming up? I hope so. I mean, if we see seventeen, I will go short the twenty twenty two fifteen puts, collect the premium, and wait. If it doesn't go down, I still make some money, but I don't buy the shares. But if they go to fifteen dollars, I buy the shares at a discount. So. The Got 16 it. puts are looking very really interesting to you, right? The premium is a dollar. So if SoFi goes to 16, you are basically buying SoFi at 15. Because the premium for that is a dollar right now. So. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty fair. Um, Parrot, uh, any any moves you're looking at since, you know, the last, like, sometimes just for anybody who is in the audience, I think a lot of good practice uh, for a lot of investors is not to place your trade or your investment you know right off the bat usually it helps to give it 15 to 30 minutes um let a little bit of the market settle um you know find its direction and then place based off that um just just what i found is work for myself and several others but of course you know teach their own um any anything come on your radar since parrot uh yeah just to, to piggyback that usually if it's the opposite move i'll i might make a move in the first 30 minutes if it makes a big jump i might sell something i've been looking to sell or vice versa but um, other than that yeah you're right uh yeah i actually just added another net put because i hate money so um <laughs> i uh i added to my position here about uh, uh i think just a couple minutes ago. what strike and date um, other than that uh yeah it's the jan 21 um 150 and is that one because there's a lot of um is there a lot of volume on that yeah there's more volume on that one so that's basically why i picked that plus the the premiums aren't too terribly bad um that far out i think it'll hold even if we even if they do good at earnings i'm not going to lose you know lose my whole uh it's a january so i won't i won't lose all my these are expensive uh, on it christ ah. oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's not that bad. Uh yeah, I mean it's like nine hundred and twenty eight dollars a foot right now. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Damn. All right, Parrot. But that's only like that's only like five percent though, man. Yeah, Parrot that Parrot is that guy. Uh that's all <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Um, okay. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right, so Evan, I think it might be a good time to like um Parrot, I don't know. I hey, got, do you have to hey, go? Yeah, I, I gotta yeah, I got to go, man, but I really appreciate you having me on, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you again on the next All right, I appreciate you coming. Um, Evan, what it might be right, a good time now for it is to uh, run through the earnings and then have maybe exclusive or GERG, you know, kind of weigh in as we go through some of the bigger earnings. Um, I'm happy to chart them, too. Also, if you're sitting with us, hanging out with us, um, we've only been going for about 40 minutes now. We'll probably go at least another 30, sometimes another hour. Um, we're just going to chart through. We're going to let you know if there's any trades that we make. Uh, just trying to be completely transparent here. That is the ultimate goal. Uh, if you're not already following our speakers, I highly recommend you take this time while you're chilling with us to just go into their profiles. You can check them out. Um, Greg Gavin is one of the fastest growing traders on here. Uh, has been really transparent with this process. Has a Discord exclusive. We just started doing spaces together the other week, but I've always enjoyed it. Evan, we're co-hosting basically every single day this week. If you see the Bua Shrippers, that is our sponsor for this space. So Maybe we might even place a trade of the week. Um, we'll see if there's something that we like. And then the Golf Blacksburg account, that's just my personal account. Um, you can check me out on there. I post um, some other stuff on there versus the Wolf account. But uh, Evan, you want to go into some of these earnings? Uh, we definitely do need to get into the trade of the week at some point. That is what I wanted to throw out there. You did hit on it for a second. Uh, I'll quickly get into that even if we don't. So uh, Dom did quickly say uh, bullish rippers, bullish rippers. Um, it's the Green Raccoon. I personally tweet from that account. They were nice enough to sponsor the spaces so we can make the trade of the week. Uh, we'll get into that a, a little bit later if we do, or maybe Friday spaces. But just overall, if you're into great stock t tweets and stuff like that, Bullish Rippers is a fantastic account. Um, I really try and tweet some really great stuff uh, from there. 
I do have an example of one pinned up at the top exclusive. I'm just going to remove this one quickly. So that one's uh, up there at the front and, and then just add it back in a minute or two. I apologize, but I have it uh, pinned up at the top. Check it out. It's a good story on George Lucas selling um, his shares to Disney. So yeah. And, and with that, I will move into a couple of the earnings. This is a, a crazy week of earnings. So I, it's, it's difficult to go through a bunch of them uh, or even, you know, a couple of them. I, I chose the biggest three in my opinions. A couple of the biggest ones I'm not going to cover, Johnson Johnson, AT&T, Intel, Chipotle, American Express. So that's the color. There's, there's a pretty crazy week. So the first one that I have in front of me is the earnings that, were, that go tomorrow first, which is Netflix. Uh, analysts are expecting EPS of $2.56, revenue of $7.48 billion. Uh, I'll, I'll be watching. I'm expecting a bunch of commentary on Squid Games, the success of that. Uh, I've been seeing a bunch of numbers around uh, they it's worth or has brought in to Netflix over nine hundred million dollars worth of value, and they were talking about how it how it only cost them about twenty one point four million dollars to make. So that's crazy. It, it is a crazy number, and what is that eight hundred and eighty billion dollars million sorry uh, of profit attributed there. And, and uh, as I was sitting there, I was thinking if Disney would have made this movie, if Disney would have made this series, I'm sorry, I think they would have been worth more money. Simply because the the engine around Disney, around just the content, uh, you know, the the merchandise, the parks, everything like that, the ecosystem, they they're better at extending it. And, and I know Netflix has started to get into uh, the merch business a little bit, but they're obviously light years away, uh, pun intended, from Disney. Uh, and yeah, so it, it's there's there's a big space for Netflix to go in, in around their content. Uh, you know, merch, video games, which they're getting really big into, and I expect a lot of commentary on, on that type of stuff. But, you know, overall, when you have a hit like Squid Games, which, I mean, if you're on Fintwit, you've seen the memes, and, and you know, empirically, I, I feel like this was the most I've ever seen uh, memes for a series, or like the most long-lasting, and just the most in general. So, uh, I think you can imagine that this definitely was one of the biggest series ever. Um, but I'll keep it moving with the next earnings I have in front of me, which is Tesla. They report Wednesday after the markets close. Uh, analysts are currently expecting EPS of $1.54 and then revenue of $13.63 billion. Now, I don't know if, if that revenue number has been adjusted since they came out with their vehicle deliveries, which were above expectations. Um, so we'll have to look into that. But, you know, Tesla, you tend to more or less know how the quarter is going to go because of the delivery numbers, which are announced before. So, you know, I, I would expect a little bit of a beat here. I, I think that's baked into it a little bit. So, you know, the expectations for Tesla are, are definitely a little bit higher than I think the expectations uh, that Wall Street have coming into it. So uh, I think if you saw a small beat with Tesla, it could be one of those situations where the stock did move lower. I think it would maybe need that little bit more of a larger beat to uh, to get that. But with that there is I'm making some short term claims uh uh, I'm definitely the long-term investor. If any of our uh, traders in here have any thoughts around Tesla or Netflix earnings, um, exclusive for Gavin, I uh, would love to hear them. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I, I agree with everything you've said so far, and especially Netflix. I mean, those numbers are monstrous. Um, so what, what's really interesting to look at on Netflix is that if you're looking at the chart here, you see there's some uh, Fibonacci confluence levels here right around the 644, 645 range. Um, so what that means is, for those who don't know, when you have these Fibonacci levels that extend above the highs of your anchor, you have these extension levels that when they coincide at different points in time, it allows you to kind of gauge a more concrete level of resistance. And if it breaks, it usually jumps. That's where you get these big gaps to the next one. So right now we're looking at around the 640 to 645 range. If it can break, I mean, that, that thing can very, very easily move you know, 10 to 15 points in the same day, possibly, but more likely the same week. So it's definitely something to look for. Um, you know, there's a lot of momentum built around Netflix at the open today. We didn't really fall for it. We, we had our trigger set in both directions below 629.9. We've already scalped it for a really good trade down to the uh, mid 620s. So as soon as it gets back above the VWAP, we're going to look at three enter on calls um, in anticipation. But, you know, if you want to wait for confirmation, um, there's definitely some pivots above where it's at right now, 627, 632, 637, if you want to wait for confirmation. 
but it's looking a little bit more healthy now that it's got the dip, but I would wait for 626.3 for confirmation to move higher um, on the daily. So um, yeah, no, Netflix is, it's definitely poised to have a really nice move after earnings, but you know, in this day and age in the market, I really don't trust earnings. I got screwed gloriously on Amazon in, a, in the first quarter when, <laughs> when Bezos uh, stepped down. So um, I was really, really happy to finally get my revenge on it um, last week without revenge trading. It just happened to work out. Um, but yeah, no, that's what I think about Netflix is watch those uh, confluence levels. Hey, real quick, um, are you currently holding Tesla calls? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I've got um, – let me pull up my portfolio real quick. Sorry, I'm in so many different windows. So right now – um, on Tesla, so I swung 850s. Um, I've still got a couple of rolls that I swung. Um, so normally, so like last week um, when it started moving, you know, obviously we were going to set up for this week. So we got 840, 45s, 50, 55s, and 60s. And now weekly, I've got 880s, 90s, 900s, and 910s. Um, the, the 900 and above, those are 100%. Um, those are just with profits. You know, whenever I do a roll, I scale out my original investment. I let it ride up to another 50 plus percent, and then I take that profit and I put it into a roll, and I just scale out of my old position and keep just keep on uh, recycling profit. Um, that way, by Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm no longer trading with my weekly allowance. I'm trading with nothing but profit. Okay, yeah, that's pretty fair. Those uh, those calls are beefy. They are not uh, not for the small of portfolio. <laughs> no, they're especially with yeah, especially with this kind of um, when you when you see this kind of delta on an option, you know that's just that's just monstrous. You know, for a for a delta to be even, you know, over 0.3, it's just you, you're you're going to see these huge moves um, every dollar the stock moves. But it's you know that's that's the thing. You know, with CrowdStrike, we had 280 calls for November two weeks ago. So you you buy these calls um, if you're a swing trader, you buy them a few weeks. Um, you want to try to avoid monthly expirations because that's usually when that's a better dip buy because, you know, the market makers are trying to liquidate those positions, keep it as far below as they can. And then the following Monday is when you wait, make your move, which is why CrowdStrike is hype. Now that they've got people out of those uh, options that expired on Friday, you know, we're, that, that's why you get them a, a week or two out after that. So that's usually the best time to buy those monthly swings. But, yeah, no, crowd's moving too, so that's that's good. But, yeah, they're definitely expensive. Just like those Amazon swings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Luke, I brought you up here real quick. What's, what are you up to, man? Hey, what's happening? Uh, just another trading morning here. Um, a usual morning. I flipped out of, so Friday, um, I picked up some calls on Snap, traded up this morning at the open, and collected a nice little profit um, pretty much right at open when it was up. I forget what it was up. It was up like $1.20 or something like that. Um, so flipped out of that, and then I rolled over into Amazon and collected a little in and out trade there. Um, uh, and these are all options trades, and um, that's really been my morning. So now I'm searching for a few entries on the watch list. Um, a few names I'm watching. I'm watching Pen, Cat, Spot. Um, I'm actually watching uh, Silvergate as well. It looks like on a four-hour 180 day. Um, you could have a nice little ascending triangle forming up there, so I'm watching that, um, seeing if that follows through. But that's really been my morning. Cool, man. Yeah, I uh, I considered getting out of the snap calls at that peak, and maybe I should have, but I'm kind of waiting a little bit closer to earnings. Um, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but I, I think good chance that they have maybe a similar move to last time on these earnings. Uh, there's been a ton of momentum in this market overall. Uh, something I guess I haven't even looked at today. Spy, spies, flat-ish, looks fine. But um, but interesting move there with um with Amazon trading into today. How's it doing today? I haven't looked at Amazon. Is it down? Amazon's um, actually it wasn't doing too bad. It's up 18 points right now. Um, but it actually like it opened up, was moving up, had actually quite a bit of strength here. Um, and it's looks like it's pulling back at least on the five minute chart to that nine EMA. Um, so I'll be watching for a little bounce off that 90 MA and possibly some more upside there. Um, and that's on a five minute chart. And then I'm also eyeing QQQ to see if it pushes up through this, uh, 50 day moving average. 
Um, I'd like to see QQQ um, regain that 50 day, uh, just more for like a comfort thing. I like watching the moving, uh, moving averages, paying attention to those. Um, and the 50 day, it seems like a key point there on QQQ, at least at the moment, in my opinion. So I'd be more comfortable taking um, some more sizable positions in these software and tech names if QQQ uh, can regain that 50 day um, SMA. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm keeping an eye on the cues as well. Never hurts to have that as a bit of a uh, metric. Um, let's see. It's kind of sitting on the 100 day, I guess, and trying to break back through the 50. It would be great yeah. if it could come through the 50. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of been floating in there the past two days, right in between the 50 and 100. So, I mean... Personally, that's just a, like the way I, that's my strategy. That's the way I trade. Um, I like to see, I'd like to see QQQ up over that 50 day. Um, that would just be more of a conviction comfort thing when it comes to a lot of these tech names. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. There's a lot going on in the market. Um, so at the moment, I'm trying to be very in and out and quick uh, with my trades instead of the more of these multi day trades, which I typically like. Those swing trades is really. Um, my niche but when the market gets a little more volatile kind of like what we're seeing now a little more choppy i like to be very in and out um so that's kind of the strategy at the moment got you got you okay well i appreciate you filling us in with that um i'm just continuing to keep an eye i mean we're seeing movement up nicely so so far just broke through 20. Uh, i think that that's a move that a lot of people have been waiting on for a while and it's looking i mean it's looking like it's kind of continuing that course tesla up over about two and a half percent, AFRM up two and a half percent. There's another one I'm looking at, which is Hut 8 Mining, um, which has been interesting. This is one of those uh, Bitcoin miners, but the one that I kind of seen with the most strength hit new all time highs today up to 2.7 percent. It was up 18 percent on Friday. Um, it's really doing well with this uh, crypto run. But the only reason I haven't got in yet is because I'm a little bit testy with these crypto miners. I've been, uh, been, been burned on this before. But welcome, Peter Tuffman. What's going on? Peter, you there? Hey, buddy, what's up, Gav? Gav, Gav, everything's working. How are you, buddy? I'm glad it's working. Let's go. I'm doing great. How's your morning oh, been over there? What a cast we've got on here. Look at this. The whole team is here. Well, uh, I want to test something. Is this the first time Peter's ever been able to hear me on the space? Can we hear uh, each other? Great. Evan, what's up, my brother? Wow. You. Yeah, this has been a four, three, whatever month problem. We have never been able to hear each other on space. This is like a spiritual awakening there, Evan. It's cool. I'm super uh, excited for this one. What's up, guys? Let's talk markets here. What do you think? Yeah, Peter, give us, you know, big picture. What's going on? So, you know what? I have to market. Wow, market rally really hot off the low this morning. I mean, we came in, we were down 20 handles. There was not a lot of activity on the opening market here in New York. Uh, we're doing a couple of um, Abbott Labs is sponsoring a big charity here on the floor with, um, I don't know, what's the soccer company. But anyway, let's talk about the psychology behind the next couple of days, right? So we're into the anniversary of the crash of 87. And as we know, psychology can be definitely something that lingers in people's minds. Obviously, we saw, you know, Look, the appetite for the market is extraordinary. Look at what we've seen. If we go back three weeks, guys, um, you know, we had that down 900 day. The, uh, the world, they were talking about recession, inflation, supply chain problems, and that this was the end of the bull market. And the next four days, we're up 2,000 points. And then we had the China story with uh, Evergard, and that was going to be the thing that interrupted the market. We were reliving the whole Lehman Brothers uh, debacle, and that never came to fruition. And Look at what we saw last week. We had one really sort of, and then we had the sell-off at the end of the quarter, which was significant. We hit levels on the S&P the next Friday morning, and we've been up ever since. We had a little bit of a, a fracture last week. We were talking about the Fed and whatnot, but the market, the, 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 the upside of the market seems substantial. Last Thursday and Friday, we had good volume. We had good breath on the upside. You know, there are some stocks that are off their 52-week highs, no doubt. There are some sectors that are definitely going through some challenges. But overall, I mean, the S&P 500 is strong. Look at this morning. You know, we, we've talked about it. 
for a while that, you know, that there are certain situations that could disrupt this market, right? And yet the market has not seen a follow through on the downside. Right. And I'm always a proponent of the line, which everyone jokes at me about markets doing what it wants to do. You know, we've had potential stories, supply chain issues, the labor force problem, the, the Federal Reserve talking about tapering, talking about raising interest rates. Um, you know, there are things economically, domestically and globally that could interrupt this rally. Yet they don't. They may be there. All the market's shown us is these are like one offs. Right. The media loves to grab a hold of these stories that the bull market's over and la, la, la. And even with all that chatter, the sell side has only been one day's story. Right. We have not seen any kind of a follow through. So what does that mean to me? That means to me that there's a bid in the market. Right. And what does that mean for, for, for uh, you know, for ga uh, home gamers here? That means that there are people sitting around with shopping lists. Right. Stocks for the last 18 months have done nothing but go up. And a lot of them are pretty far along in the tooth. The market is in a bit way, in a big way, and a lot of the sectors are. So people who are looking for a long-term investing play are hesitant to buy some of these stocks up at these levels. And so when the market does have those wonderful days, and it's like Macy's 50% sale, guys. You know, it's sort of I always joke about. It. It's like you know when Macy's puts the sign out front saying 50% sale. Do you run for the hills and get all scared? No. You go inside and buy the things you've been dying to buy for the last six months. Same with the market. When we've had these days, unless you're someone that's listening to the, the Internet for your advice or you're listening to the media that's talking about, you know, the supply chain, it's going to be recession, it's going to be uh, the, the, you know, doomsday stories. It's, you know, the market's been going up for 18 months. We've had four sell, sell periods over the last three months that none of them have lasted more than a week. Most of them have not lasted more than a day or two. So what does that mean? That means people are sitting around with a shopping list, waiting for the market to go down 5%, 10%. It hasn't even done that. You know, down 1% or 2%, people get anxious and they start buying things that are going on sale. So we opened down this morning. The market was down 20 handles. Where are we now? Down two. So what does that mean? That means that people are taking the opportunity to buy things. We're coming into the end. We're coming into the last corner. You know, we know that the Federal Reserve is going to start doing some taper. We know they've pushed the uh, interest rate raise down uh, off to 2023. They've kicked that uh, uh, ball down the road. We know that the debt ceiling story has also been kicked down the road. So, I mean, people are buying the market. They're telling it. I'm not telling you what the market's doing. People who are buying this market, the market's telling me that there's a huge appetite for it. Very interesting, Peter. It's, uh, you know, I appreciate you bringing in all the different macro stories that have kind of been thrown at us, whether it was, you know, things coming out of China or things coming out of our own area and how they haven't necessarily affected it. And then we had that pullback uh, even just last week, right, in SPY, but it only ended up down about maybe 5% and then now has risen back up above the key moving averages. And again, is, you know, only slightly red today, like you just mentioned, but it's kind of continuing to come back. Um, you did mention that, you know, some of these names could be a little bit uh, overbought, perhaps a little bit overextended. As we go into earnings season here, you know, we were discussing on the earlier part of this call, uh, some people have been taking puts against some of the names that have really risen up, perhaps like a net or a crowd that have just been flying, you know, 60% the last three months. And they think, you know, if the earnings aren't just blow out of the water, you could see a little bit of a pullback. Um, what's your opinion on that? You know what? I'm really hesitant to take any kind of a short posture on this market. I really am. You know, I think there are so many different tiers of people who have yet to buy into the market. People are in cash. People are fearful that this market is going to break, you know, that this is a bubble. I mean, la, 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 la. You're hearing every story in the world. And the market tells you what it thinks, right? I mean, these, these are real numbers, right, guys? The earnings are, have been strong. The bank earnings that are coming out of the gate fourth quarter here are really been good. Even the guidance, the guidance is starting to be solid. So, you know, I am hesitant to do that. I mean, I, you know, people can do what they really want to do. But I know I've, I work with a couple of the veteran uh, bears in the market, guys who trade the S&P 500. I've known them for years. They used to work on the floor and they're throwing in the friggin' towel, right? They are guys who, you know, love to short the market. They will never buy the market. And, um, 
And they are even saying, you know what, and I speak to them regularly, and after years and years, they've been blown up so many times. You know, there are this a wonderful generation over the years of people who just have to be short the market when the market is up, right? And obviously, those guys have been hurt quite, quite badly. And um, so, look, for a short-term bet, maybe the puts are a way to play this thing. You know, some of these, as we know, some of these stocks are pretty long in the tooth. Um, I know from a technical point of view, we've seen stocks that have run up on this vacuum that we see with the enthusiasm, whether it's the meme stocks or they're just the, 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 you know, the, the hype. I mean, I'm noticing we've got the Wall Street, uh, we got the bull here. The Wall Street bets guys are on, the, on this call. How exciting is that? We're going to have to let the, that gentleman to my right on this call talk about something that they're tickling. I understand. I heard from a little birdie. But um, anyway, look, from a technical point of view, every day there have been opportunities for some of these names, whether they're the Myrna's of the world, the UPST's of the world, or whatnot, when stocks get caught up in the hype and they run up 10, 20, 30 percent in a short period of time, uh, then, yes, there's definitely uh, a moving average trade that sets up for a put, whether you trade it on the option side or you just trade it on a regular way. Um, but I would be hesitant to short this market. I'm a forensic analyst of this market. And the way I see this market move last Thursday and Friday, I've got to say, guys, I would not be standing in front of this freight train. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, and I agree. We just got, um, I see a couple of hands. I'm going to go to you guys, but we did just get uh, Wall Street. Uh, back to memes. Uh, I think it's Wall Street memes is up here right now. And it sounds like there might have been somebody you want to talk to you Peter's side, but also just if you have any general thoughts on the market, appreciate you joining us today. Hey, how's it going, guys? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yep. Appreciate you joining yeah, us. Nice, nice to meet everyone here. Never really did a Twitter spaces before this, but uh, it's pretty exciting because we're definitely more on Instagram than Twitter, but we're trying to catch up to uh, the Twitter hype. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, our general view of the market, obviously, you know, we had a, a little bit of a shakeup at the beginning of the year, GameStop, AMC, all that. Um, personally, you know, we loved that hype because it brought probably millions of new traders that never even heard about the stock market and never even downloaded Robinhood or whatever that may be. Um, and, and they kind of joined the community now. And I think, you know, what we're trying to do, at least within our community, because we're not the subreddit, we just represent the community, you know, on Instagram, um, through Wall Street memes. And I think we're trying to kind of just introduce them to the fact that, you know, the market, even though you could kind of gamble on it, uh, you should also be able to, you know, look at it as a, as a way to protect your cash. Because let's be honest, uh, inflation is transitory. It's a, it's a very questionable thing. Um, cash is trash. And, you know, holding cash in your bank account is pretty much, you know, you're just losing money. Uh, I do advise everyone, you know, friends, family, you know, our followers, you know, do have some savings because, you know, you never know what might, ha might happen in life. But uh, for, for the most part, uh, you should always be thinking of, you know, where can I put my money so it works for me? Because, uh, you know, that's really the only way that we're going to survive, uh, I think, the next like two, three years of, uh, you know, the reality of what's happening. Uh, I'm personally uh, involved in e-commerce a lot. Uh, aside from this, you know, we have the merch store, but. Uh, my full-time job, you know, I've been in e-commerce for 10 years, and uh, I source from China, I source from other places, and, uh, you know, what's happening now is it's a little concerning, and I think, you know, everything is going to go up in price significantly in the next, you know, two, three months, so if you're not making your money make more money, uh, you know, you're probably not going to do really well financially, and, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, they're not financially literate, uh, they're kind of left behind. Uh, they're going to be left behind a lot more. So I think it's crucial that, you know, we get more and more of these new traders, these young people to, uh, you know, just be aware of what's happening, be open-minded. Uh, I don't think the market is crashing or anything like that. I do think, you know, we already had a small crash of, like, the small caps. Uh, I mean, you can look at the ARK investing funds in 2021 to really see, you know, that correction that everybody was waiting for. I don't think we're waiting for, uh, you know, the next uh, 2008 at this point because, uh, I think we have the smartest, you know, retail traders ever in the history of, you know, the stock market. Uh, people are, you know, always on the lookout. People are reading daily what's happening. No longer they're going to financial advisors to, like, really manage their money. And we're part of a revolution that, you know, I think is here to stay. And we're excited to be a part of it. And I think that, uh, you know, 
things things are going to be a little scary on one end, but if you are aware of what's happening and uh, you know doing the right thing with your money, um, it's going to be fun too. And uh, I mean, the most fun part, you know, our culture, uh, they're they're risk takers, which you know it could be a bad thing, it could be a good thing, but I think the good thing about it is you know they embrace um, new opportunities, change, and uh, hopefully they're not bearish because you know we don't like the bears personally, but. <laughs> Uh, I think I think it's gonna be like a lot of exciting things happening. I think it's just the beginning of like you know this retail revolution, uh, and I think Wall Street is watching. And Wall Street is kind of at first they were scared after GameStop and AMC, but I think now you know Wall Street just from the new new advertisers that we're getting on our platforms, you know they they want to reach out to this new clientele of you know people that never had a lot of money. Um, and maybe they're not, you know, investing seven figures with, you know, financial advisors. Maybe they just have, you know, a few thousand dollars, and uh, they want to give it a shot. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be a huge transition now. And I think we're just like tip of the iceberg at the moment. Absolutely. You know, this is something we talked about a little bit on our spaces over the past several months. And um, just to all the speakers, I am getting some background noise from someone. Um, yes, thank you for meeting. Uh, so this is something we've talked on our spaces about for several months, and I think we fully agree. You know, there's a huge movement here within retail investors, and it started out obviously towards the beginning of the pandemic as 20 million people opened, you know, Robinhood accounts to the rest of that year. Obviously, there were many other sites that were getting accounts opened as well, and now there's just so much access to information. And whether it's on Twitter Spaces where we're coming on here and right openly sharing, and we've had Twitter Spaces where people are kind of even boots on the ground, like you know, I went to this company's headquarters or I spoke with the manager from here, and we share that with each other. Or, you know, you can follow the flow with tracking services like Quant Data or Unusual Whales, other ones like that. And you can really see, all right, well, what are these whales doing? You now have this, you know, Nancy Pelosi tracker account that's kind of showing us, you know, what is she trading and buying? So I completely agree with you that retail investors are not just smarter. They're much better equipped. Um, and they have a lot of people to turn to, you know, that are offering different courses of technical analysis, a fundamental analysis. Um, and you can kind of collaborate and work in, you know, as a team on social media. So absolutely and then Peter mentioned that there was something um, that he was teasing. Are you uh, ready to speak about any of that or keeping that for another day? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I could definitely tease it out. Uh, you know, it's a collection uh, in the NFT space that we've been working on since August uh, with a really uh, popular artist. Uh, you know, he, I don't know how many people know this band, Avenged Sevenfold. It's a rock band, but uh, he's pretty much kind of best friends with one of the lead singers, and he launched an NFT collection with them. Uh, we kind of, we, we lucked out in a lot of ways because his best friend uh, is all in on NFT developing. He's a coder, um, so we kind of have like this this cool little team of like uh, a semi-famous artist, uh, a really seasoned developer, and of course, you know the Wall Street Beats, Wall Street Bets, Wall Street Memes community. And uh, you know our collection is going to be the typical ten thousand uh, collection of uh, Wall Street themed bowls. So they're going to embody, you know, the different traits of, uh, you know, all the memes that can kind of have been happening in the market since the pandemic in the last two years. And at the moment, we are just uh, still, uh, we're, we're fully booked with the pre-sale, uh, but the minting didn't even start. So for those who are not fully familiar with NFTs, you know, we're trying to get a lot of new people, you know, to learn about it. Um, there are a lot of projects that are very sketchy, and I'm not, uh, I don't fault anyone for kind of thinking, you know, are these like, Beanie Babies, or you know, just like a fad, but I would pr pretty much compare you know this NFT craze to whatever happened in cryptocurrency like 2016, you know, like that really big uh, rush to to the retail market. So there will be a few collections that are going to be like you know your Bitcoins, Ethereum, Litecoins, uh, and then there will be a lot of uh, you know shit coins, NFTs that just blow up right away. And uh, we're doing everything in our power to make sure that you know we're building. Uh, a really fun collection. Uh, one of the utilities in this collection is actually going to be an options market within our uh, NFT space. So what it's going to do is like you know you could execute a virtual contract and then like your NFT character can uh, have their art change in real time. Like if the, if the option contract goes well, uh, you know your your NFT bowl gets like a Lambo. If the option contract goes the other way, you know you might get like a, a cardboard box or a food stamp for your <laughs> for your NFT character. So uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, we have like proprietary coding actually happening, so we might be like the first collection to do this. And you guys can check out uh, the our bio on uh, on Twitter. 
and we have like a little Discord going. Already, I think over 8,000 members on there. Uh, you can kind of see the the insane energy and uh, the excitement about it. And we think the website will finally be launched uh, by tonight. So uh, the website is gonna give a lot more information about the project and uh, what we have planned. And you know, I would love to answer any questions someone might have about it, or if, if someone is even just curious to learn more about NFTs, because back in like July, August, uh, I myself thought this was, you know, this was nothing, like just a, a little craze. But after working on this for three months, uh, I, I really understand it a lot more and I see the, the long-term potential. So I would love to, you know, clear, clear anything out for anyone who's curious about it. And I have my artist, Sam, on here. So maybe we oh. can invite him to speak. Yeah. Sweet. Well, yeah, just don't let him know to uh, go ahead and request. And then we'd be able to bring them up. And if you're not already uh, following the Wall Street memes page, I highly recommend it. It's a very fun follow. You can learn while also being entertained. And, yeah, I think Evan had a question for you. Yeah, I have a couple things. Thank you so much for coming up here. I've been, we've been talking in DMs a little bit. Wall Street memes, 100%. It is my favorite meme page. Always makes me laugh. Follow, I follow them on Instagram. They post most of them to Twitter. Uh, the ones that they don't, I like to post. Uh, it, those tend to be those tend to do amazing. So um, if you're into laughing while you know doing finance and everything like that, definitely check out Wall Street memes. I am a big fan of them. Um, yes, I, I got a couple questions uh, about the NFT project, but one thing more, um, you know, big picture with it, and, and a story that came out today that I saw was Coinbase, their NFT marketplace. They now have 2.3 million dollar, uh, not million dollars, 2.3 million people on their wait list. So I kind of just wanted to get from your perspective as someone who's about to launch an NFT. Uh, I, my assumption goes that it's going to be on OpenSea. Was there any discussions on the back end about maybe waiting for Coinbase to come or, or possibly testing somewhere else, maybe Solana's marketplace? Or, or was it kind of just an easy decision for you to go to OpenSea, if that's where you're going? Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're really excited about the Coinbase launch because uh, it's going to bring so many new people that, you know, didn't really have access to uh, NFTs, didn't really think much about them. And the fact that so many, like 2 million people signed up, I think it just speaks to the fact that NFTs are here to stay. Uh, as I said before, 95% of projects are not here to stay and will diminish. We're working to be part of the 5% that you know are here to stay. We're doing everything in our power to do that. And I think you guys are going to see some cool things uh, popping up in the next week or two about, about the project that We'll bring a lot of confidence to that fact. Um, but yeah, in terms of launching on OpenSea, OpenSea already has, you know, the NFT veterans and uh, enthusiasts and really it's it's the Amazon of NFTs, right? Because at the end of the day, it's an exchange, it's a marketplace. Um, and Coinbase, um, yeah, Coinbase is going to be huge, but they're never going to be known as like, you know, the, the first NFT marketplace that opened up. They might be like the eBay of N NFTs. You know, if someone wants to do kind of like a small project, something quick, uh, you know, clear it out really quickly. And uh, I, w I would imagine, you know, if you have like a DJ, like Diplo, and he has a collection of like 20 NFTs and he's like, all right, guys, go grab it. You know, like, you know, you can have my exclusive NFT. He might drop it on, uh, on Coinbase because he's not really building a project. He's not building like a company out of it. He's just giving something exclusive for his fans, kind of like a merch store, but more like on the NFT section. So that's what I see happening with Coinbase. It's going to be more for like the average person. But OpenSea is here to stay for, you know, the real collectors, you know, the, the Van Goghs, the Picassos. Uh, that's not going away. And, you know, we want to be we want to be that that type of collection. We want to we want to be a, a very rare and uh, exclusive opportunity for, you know, our community and hopefully, you um, Kind of collect, uh, connecting the Wall Street traders or you know the stock market enthusiasts to uh, the NFT space because I think right now a lot of people that love the stock market they're not necessarily confident about NFTs. It's more like a cryptocurrency uh, move movement. But I think you know we might be that first collection to really tell you know these retail traders in, in the stock market even maybe hedge funds like who the hell knows. Uh, we're going to tell them, hey, you guys might want to check out what's happening with NFTs because, you know, this is uh, this is the next asset that, you know, could protect yourself from inflation potentially even, you know, if you invest in the right asset. So, yeah, that's that's where I see my personal vision. And I don't know if Cam, oh, yeah, Cam's a speaker. He can probably, uh, he, he's the artist uh, behind this and he's an amazing visionary uh, and he's probably even more 
uh, excited about this project than myself, and I'm pretty excited. He's just uh, very ecstatic about it, so I would love to hear him speak if, if that's possible. Hey, Boris. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. Sorry, I came in halfway through. This was on. I was I was fighting through our Discord right now. It's pure chaos as always. Oh <laughs> yeah, our Discord is uh, it's scary at times, but it's exciting as well. <laughs> It's not like other discords. They're complete savages. It's like all of the GameStop run up 2020 on crack. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, I would love, Ken, have you been in a couple other projects, uh, NFT projects in the space? Yeah, I, have. I, I love the space. Um, I find it super exciting. Awesome. So, so with that, actually, one thing you just said there, um, I think Wall Street News was hitting there that he thinks it's a different audience, that this is a different type of person that is buying this NFT. Like, you know, I feel like there's a lot of good people, a lot of you know, people saying that the NFT community, yeah, these prices are going for a lot, but it is a really small community where there's only uh, an X amount of people buying it and the number isn't too crazy. So uh, have you noticed like a, a different type of person maybe getting in, into this project as opposed to some of the other ones you've seen? I think it's not necessarily a different type of person. I think the person's changing, maybe evolving to get like a little bit more hard in the paint with it. Um, I think that like the new people coming on are, are getting excited fast and they're just buying everything not bolted to the ground. I think there's a phase that people go through and I think like the seasoned vets are getting like even deeper and deeper. There's, I'm not seeing a lot of back off. I'm just seeing, you know, more adoption. I wish it was wide range. I wish that there was more access. And the question that that guy had asked about Coinbase, there's just not enough adoption yet. So the more adoption we get, like, I think that the energy that this community has now is just going to, you know, keep, keep freight training. So I, I would love to know kind of, you know, my, my thoughts on this stuff in general, that, you know, you really build strong communities when prices are going down and, and not necessarily when they're going up. I think that those real communities are, you know, it's different when, you know, you have your own social media and you're kind of an influencer or celebrity or doing something like that. You can create your communities whenever. But just for, for assets that like NFTs, um, I hear a lot of people talking about community and, and that's how that's a big, big, you know, important thing and part of uh, aspect of NFTs. And, and my doubt always with it is that, you, you know, a community is really strong when stuff is going up. Uh, it's much difficult, much more difficult to keep those people here when everyone's not making a bunch of money. So that, that's, um, I, I do own some NFTs and I'm in the space, but when I think about, you know, something that I hear people talk about and, and a, a negative or a hole that I would like to point in it, it, it is that. Um, so is that something you kind of overall agree with or, or you know, any pushback? Totally. Like there? I, to I totally agree with that. I think it's the same for stock. I think it's yeah. when the market's in a bull run, everybody wants to be in. When you're supposed to be buying and the chips are down and it's the dip, you know, like that's when it gets, you know, you have to work your disciplines. Um, I, I've heard a couple of arguments last night that, you know, uh, NFTs and crypto are in a bear. And I don't really believe that. I just I think it's so new. It's like saying, you know, I mean, this world has really been adopted in like the last two years is it's exploded with users and the Tom Brady's one in. And, you know, we wanted to do something where. Hopefully, it would be its own world within inside the world where we're melting, you know, the day trader, the retail trader, the collector, you know, and just your average investor with the NFT space. And that was kind of the impetus of the Wall Street Bulls. So kind of with that, like I plan to hold a Wall Street Bull just because I'm friends with you guys and I love the account. And I love everything like that. I'm going to hold the tickers NFT and unusual whales. I'm going to hold all this stuff for, for a while just because. You know, I like it and I'm supporting the people on the back end. But for these projects that, you know, you don't have a, a real connection with whoever's making it, for, for me, like, like you said, it is very, very similar to stocks. It's the same thing. Uh, for me, my fallback when, when they're going up is kind of just looking at the numbers and getting into the fundamentals and seeing, like, real aspects of it. Um, it's a little bit more difficult for NFTs because it, it's, you know, a lot of times trading uh, off of different stuff. But... If, in theory, if you were trying to look for the types of projects that would last for a long time, obviously it's super difficult to know. But what are the type type of like back end stuff it, that you'd be looking at? Is it uh, utility that's being built out? Is it active members in the Discord, or is it just kind of something else? It's such such a good question. Um, 
honestly, right now, today, it's 100% utility. But that could change in like a day or two. Like this space, space is moving so fast. I think you have to get savvy real fast and evolve real quick. Um, right now, I mean, I don't know if I would be getting super involved in a collection. If I liked it, sure, I'd buy it, you know. But if it was like as far as like an NFT investment, like you better have utility. You better have a strong following, you know. Um, with the bulls, we wanted to – we we built out almost – three years of utility at this point and i need it vague enough and malleable enough and fluid enough to 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 change with the times you know and we we want it to live on because it's fun not because we're you know like we want all of our buyers to get lambos but this is like kind of a super exciting fun thing to do where you can communicate with people with art in the digital space with crypto and i mean what else more do you want <sighs> Awesome. I appreciate you for coming up. Wall Street Memes, Cam, both of you, thank you guys for joining in. If you want to check out this project, click into Wall Street Memes profile, join their Discord, uh, and definitely check it out. Uh, I really appreciate you guys joining in. would love to have you guys stay up here for, for some of the more uh, of the stock talk we have coming up. I don't know how much longer we're going for, but um, yeah, thank you guys again, and uh, I'd love to throw it back Yeah, to thank you guys for having us, and uh, we'll love to talk more about it, you know, as the project develops. Uh, listen, invitation's always open. I'd love to have you guys back on. Appreciate it. Yeah, you. we can, um, once you guys launch, hopefully uh, we can do maybe a space next week together and we can chat a little bit more, make a little bit more NFT focus than that one. Um, but, Gerg, you want to go next? Yeah, Wolf, I lied. I bought some sofa just now. Yeah, bucks. I saw. I saw. <laughs> yeah, I got tempted. So. Are you yeah. on Snap? Did you say you called? I should have sold at the open. <laughs> yeah, it's just people dump and no news. Yeah, it just absolutely just fell off a cliff in the last, like, few minutes. I don't know what's going on. There is no news. Why? No, why even on Bloomberg right now, time. last update was a new hub, and nothing else was do there. So. Yeah, I mean, I, it was looking good, you know, bust through all-time highs, get the resistance, and then all of a sudden, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and it's not, it's not good, and it's, it's not good if it goes underneath where it is right now. With yeah, snap, it just it's... broke all of its supports, right? It broke all of its levels. Uh, all of the averages, it just blew it all off. I mean, Snap does have does have good support at seventy two and seventy. Last month, it broke the seventy two support three times, but it didn't block like the seventy one stayed there, so. I wouldn't be surprised if you use Snap or Soundy again, so... But when yeah. do you call it Spire? This Friday? They're, or next yeah, Friday? They're, they're, they're weeklies. <laughs> oh, rest in peace. I know, I know. It's gonna be tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold through today, at least. Uh, at least for another few hours. And see if we make a move back towards green if this market turns. Um, but yeah, I know. I, I, I was sitting there at open. I literally said it on this space. It was recorded. I went. Yeah, I saw you every, like you're up twenty five bucks, and I was I was jealous. So. I was like every bone in my body says sell, and then I didn't sell. Like yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you AL is green, so now it's bad green. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, luckily, I think I'm still. Yeah, the snap stuff's weighing me down, but I'm I'm whatever. I'm still flat on the day, which I'm fine with. Um, exclusive, you've been uh, pretty patient. What's going on, man? No, it's all good, man. Um, well, I was trying to let everyone know when Coin broke 280, it's already gone. Um, those calls are up 300%. So w when it broke that weekly pivot and then it broke the fib, it just just kept going. Um, posted a chart on Twitter. I don't know if anyone caught it through. Um, 292.91 was the next fib. So I mean, it's just you know, obviously it is where it is right now. Um, the next one I was gonna let you guys know was um, through Moderna through uh, 331.52 it's all but it's already up to 337 so um that might go up to that previous gap fill level at 339.35 um so that might be some first level for resistance but yeah no i was just trying to let people know that the coin was on the verge of breaking okay yeah keeping an eye on that obviously they've been getting a lot of press with everything that's been going on uh peter i wanted to bring it back to you for a second um you know what's going on with you this week anything that's I, I think we talked about some of the macro stuff from a you know behind perspective and just the moves in the market. But is there anything on your radar this week as we move into 
you know, maybe some of the bigger earnings or any of the bigger news stories? Uh, hi, guys. Good to be back on, on here. First, I want to address what, what Cam and uh, Wall Street Memes was talking about. It was a great question by Evan, and I'll just dip into it for a second and move on. But, you know, he was asking what people should do to really find out which are the, the, the value, the value uh, NFTs and not. And it's really kind of, you know, the, it goes back to my story about Macy's going on sale. If you do the homework, right, and you look into the nooks and crannies of each one of these things, as you know now, there are 2,000 people waiting to get their NFTs on, on Coinbase, right? And 90%, as we know that 89% of day traders fail, 90% of NFTs will be not, not more than a blip in the road. So, guys, I know that if you, you, you've got to look, in, look into the nooks and crannies of stocks, you've got to do the homework listening to a robot or 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 or, or the the internet for financial advice is a mistake learning technical analysis fundamental analysis and looking to, really into these companies we had a gentleman on this call a couple of weeks ago who talked about really look going deep into the company see what they're going to be doing in the future not only what their guidance and earnings are doing but what what do they have on on the docket that's really exciting that's pivotal that's new and the same thing with the nft space it's like we talked about it with Boss Beauties the other day. When you have an NFT project that's got utility connected to it, right, then then there's more value to it. Like the guys at, at Wall Street Memes and Cam, they've done a lot of work. They've really built a back engine. They've, first of all, they have the community. They've got the back engine, and they've got – they've done their homework on this thing. So that, you know, when you build – we talk about it here on the floor of the exchange when we – why do we do the best IPOs in the world? Why is our price discovery the best? Because when you bring a stock to market and you bring it to the public, it's a matter of, it's like you're building a building. And the way a stock opens here at the New York Stock Exchange, how we do price discovery will affect the way a stock trades for the rest of its life. When you build a building, if you skimp on, on, on uh, materials, the building's going to fall down. If you don't place the bricks the right way all the way through and you build the foundation the way it's supposed to be, the building will fall down. Same with an NFT project. Same with a stock that runs up on news and hype and doesn't have the support or the fundamentals or the technicals to carry through. So if you're going to get involved in, in the in the NFT space, definitely check out Cam and the and the Wall Street meme guys. What they're doing, look, sometimes the Wall Street meme guys have gotten a little bit out of the box, and it was a little something I really didn't want to address or, or embrace. But they've put together a community of people in the millions who are now looking at the market for the first time in their lives. They have access to it. And so it's a pivotal time for us, and we've talked about it with Wolf before. This is a big part of the Wolf community, the new retail trader, right? This is a new generation. This is not your grandfather's stock market. We've never seen what's happening now. This is a movement, right, of 40 million plus new people getting involved in stocks, retail trading, long-term investing, and NFTs. And if we don't curate this community in the right way, they're going to go off the rail like lemmings and end up blowing up their accounts. So it behooves people like myself, and that's why I've taken on Wolf. I've taken on, you know, working with, with, with Cam and with Wall Street Memes to help curate this incredible new generation and community, right, to bring value to them, to bring what I know with 35 years' experience so that they're able to hit singles and doubles, grow. Finally, they've been invited to this incredible party called Wall Street, and we don't want them to get drunk and go home and, and, and blame the world for, for having lost money. This is pivotal time, guys. Wolf is going to do it with their launch of a new trading platform that's going to give you guys access to markets, give you access to all kinds of things, which they'll later talk about, uh, you know, as their whole story evolves. And the same thing with the value of the Wall Street memes project with Wall Street bulls, right? These are not just one-off NFT people who are just throwing something out into the marketplace with absolutely no responsibility for a project and an investment they're bringing to the market. They've done the homework. These things have teeth to them. It's the same thing I talk about when I try and teach people about technical analysis, guys. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Ne NFTs, the stock market, retail trading. It's not. Maybe you guys or a couple of you Doge, Dogecoin millionaires on the call, and I, I, I just to hate, I love you. I'm so happy you made money. But I promise you, if you don't do the homework, you're going to go to that well one too many times, and you're going to turn a winning trade into a losing trade and get blown up. So I'm here to help embrace the retail customer. I'm here to embrace the meme project. I, 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 
I, I think it's awesome. They have a community that is groundbreaking their Discord. It's a little bit off the rails, but I love it. You know, the project, you guys go check out the Wall Street Bulls project. It's super cool. The artwork, Cam, you know, it's the first time you and I are talking, but it's it's spectacular. It is some of the best uh, NFT artwork I have seen. The project's got teeth into it. And guys, please, I beg of you to learn technical analysis, learn fundamentals, you know, do the homework so that you're not asking a bunch of people on the internet whether you should buy a stock following the hype. You know, you're, you're buying, uh, uh, you know, uh, GameStop at $483 because somebody sure did. And I promise you they sold it at 60. So I got to run after this, but it's so good to be on with all of you. Going into the week, I have a couple of fun projects I'm working on. I'm going to be on the floor of the exchange with Andrew Aziz. He's a, a bull and bear trader on Instagram. He is a number one top uh, um, writer about day trading and technical analysis. We're going to be doing a podcast here on the floor. Guys, everybody, if you always ask me what book should I read about day trading, go check out Andrew Aziz. Seven books that are now bestsellers all over the world about day trading and technical analysis. And then hopefully at the end of the week, I'm going to have Earn Your Leisure, which is an amazing uh, uh, podcast. They've got a million followers worldwide talking about financial literacy, wealth, uh, generational wealth. And, you know, I'm here to share my community with you. And I'm, I'm honored to be part of the Wolf Group, Stock Market News. It's so great to have be able to hear you. And what a great call. Absolutely. Yeah, we covered a lot of wide bases in this call, but I think all your main points stand out there, Peter, with being able to do your own due diligence, trusting yourself, uh, you know, learning technical analysis and things along those lines can seem difficult off the bat, but we have YouTube now, which makes life a lot easier. Um, we have courses, you have Peter's course, um, you have some others, you can use uh, things like TrendSpider and other uh, different platforms, TradingView, to be able to do your charting. So there's a lot of different opportunities and options. So yeah, really, really appreciate you joining us, Peter. Cheers, guys. Love you all. Wall Street Global Trading. Check it out. All right. Take care. Um, real quick, uh, TSDR brought you up. Did you have uh, a comment you wanted to make? Um, I guess I just have two brief comments um, on a few topics that I think would be interesting to discuss. Either it looks like this call is kind of wrapping up. Um, but the a lot of these cybersecurity charts have um, – been looking amazing especially last week with CrowdStrike and Zscaler specifically uh, they gave some great opportunities uh, on the hourly charts as soon as they broke that uh, trend line that was going down I've got it drawn out I wish I could show you guys right now I'll DM you Wolf after this to show you what I was seeing um, and so that's just a topic I, I think a lot of you guys could could touch on uh, you know the fundamentally and um, even technically how how bullish I think uh, Z scalers at all-time highs and crowd going back to all-time highs I think is a great opportunity uh, maybe missed the boat uh, this morning I think was probably your best last opportunity um, but and then lastly a chart I'm looking at uh, specifically this week for uh, a very good trade that I see some good potential in is uh, visa ticker V um, I think uh, if we break over that 233 33 level, which is the high from a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago or so, I think we've got some good upside uh, towards the all-time highs, especially with the holiday season coming up. Uh, something that I'll be looking to take um, potentially the 235 or 240 calls uh, when that occurs, uh, looking at uh, either the December monthlies or the uh, November, depending on how I want to manage that trade. Uh, just a few things I'm looking at right there. Cool. We uh, we did, I think, go into some of those. Uh, towards the beginning of this call, we spoke a little bit about Net and Crowd, which have kind of um, acted pretty nicely today since we spoke about them, you know, coming into these uh, sideways traverse for the last hour, hour and a half, um, which has been great to see. Uh, they're not just, you know, they're keeping the strength up. They're not falling. Um, so continuing to keep my eye on those. Um, we actually talked about how some people were taking puts on them going into earnings season. Uh, however, because of this massive run up, the premium is just insane. Um, I looked at them. Those are some prices that are out of my price range on some of these puts. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping those on the radar. I mean, Visa, that is not one that I've really looked at in a little while, um, but that is ticker V for anyone. And that looks interesting, you know, coming up off the 200 day, pass through the 50 day. Um, yeah, I would definitely see that if that got up to like 231, 232, it could pull above the 100 day in that volume shelf. So interesting stuff there. Appreciate it. Um, keeping the ball rolling. So if anybody's been enjoying this as well, this is the first of 11 spaces that I'm going to be doing this week. It's going to be a gauntlet. This is just one of three today. 
Um, I put out a master schedule, which Twitter Spaces actually retweeted, so you can see it on their page, you can see it on mine. Um, but yeah, if you want to make sure that you're checking out all these spaces, once more I'll say it, um, I have a free public Google Calendar, and if you DM me your email, say add me to the calendar, I will go ahead and add you to it so you can get those all on there. Um, and also appreciate everyone that follows. And of course, you should be following my speakers, and I'm going to keep going because we brought up some more speakers. Juicy, what's going on, man? What's going on? It wouldn't let me turn my mic on. Um, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, dude. Living the dream. How you doing? I slayed the market this morning. Pretty much went all cash. Caught a pretty big gain here. I'm crowd, Afrium, just cut AMC. Uh, let me just pull up my PNL. Let's see. I also had Nike short, and that's pretty much my day. I'm still eyeing, eyeing like I told you. I'm really liking Square above 252. You know, they had that Bitcoin news over the weekend when they're trying to get into Bitcoin mining. Uh, the weekly charts inside, you guys know I'm a big fan of these inside bar breaks. Uh, so the weekly, once that breaks at 252, you'll be breaking to the outside of the inside bar. Um, and you got room pretty much to 270. So that's pretty much what I'm watching. Watching Netflix here into earnings, and of course, got my eye on Tesla. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, I'm flat right now. I'm four for four in a day for day trade. So I'm just hanging out, waiting on something to break out. But besides that, I'm cash. I like it. I like it. Yeah, we were talking about Tesla a little bit earlier. Definitely plenty of strength there. And then of course, in a name that we keep talking about, which, you know, Gerg, maybe we'll bring you back in on this. It's just moving. It's AFR, AFRM is now up 7% today. Um, a a form is the new UPSD. But how, how, how long is that going to last for? It will work until it doesn't. That is technical analysis right there in a nutshell. Uh, I mean, juicy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so for me, after, like, I want to say this, man. Like, we saw the same thing with Zoom when Zoom first came out. We saw the same thing with Neo when they first came out. Some of these names, when they get going, they get what I call a hype phase. And it's like, it doesn't even obey any form of technical analysis. It just goes up. Right, and that's what we're seeing out of Afrim right now. Um, well, affirm, I just call it by the ticker Afrim AFRM, whatever. But point of the matter is, I don't think it's going to stay up that much longer. I do think it's going to pull back. That's why I'm taking it day by day. If I get a setup, I get in, get right out, take my piece. Like I took 72% of Afrim today and I was done, you know. So, in and out for me, the best way to play it because it's, for me, it's too extended for me to buy long over a long term play. Yeah, sorry. With Neo, yeah, there's actually a, a funny story in there. I, I bought that on his IPO day. Uh, I, I just remember them coming out, and, like, they were really making massive claims, like, we're the Tesla of China, we're the Tesla of China. Uh, and then, like, it took, like, six months to, like, I, I sold on the IPO day as well because it, it, it was a mistake, me buying. Uh, I sold out for a little bit, and it's just funny in me seeing it now so high. Um, but there was like a, a solid year two period where a couple of their names, like it was just doing nothing. Maybe it was a year, two years is too long. Uh, and then all of a sudden with like the 2020 market, it really started to pick up. And, you know, obviously now we know how, how popular the entire EV sector is. Yeah, I actually was researching Neo this weekend a bit um, because I was looking at the position whether I wanted to actually get out of it. And, you know, I... I so they had some news come out last week about how they were uh, something like getting too crowded at their charging stations uh, because, you know, more people are buying the cars. So now they have to, you know, increase the charging stations and stuff. So I don't know. It seems bullish um, from the perspective of, you know, that they're having uh, more demand. And I don't know if they're going to get caught up in this whole shipping crisis as well with, you know, getting parts. Obviously, we all know that this, this car market has been just insane. Actually, I haven't looked at the tickers yet, but if you look at, let's say, CAR, yeah, they're still moving. CAR, Avis Budget Group, um, they're up about 2% today. I mean, that's one that's up 63% this month. Um, so I don't know if those things are going to go ahead and affect NEO as well. I'll be interested to see it. All right, I see hands. Uh, TSDR, you were up first. Yeah, I was um, going to respond. People were talking about Square, PayPal. Um, so... And I, you know, and com to compare to my uh, thesis on uh, Visa, um, just from a te technical standpoint, uh, with PayPal and Square uh, have very similar looking charts as Visa. Uh, but Visa uh, last week remounted its 50 day moving average. And today it kind of flushed down slightly and it held the 50 day moving average pretty much to the, 
you know, to the penny within, you know, 30 cents of it. And then it bounced up and it's, and it's sitting down, down about two and a half or 0.25% right now. So with uh, Square and PayPal having the 50 day moving average above it, I just see some more short term potential gain if that whole sector starts to, to move um, with uh, more with Visa. I, I feel more a quicker move coming in Visa versus Square and PayPal. Got it. Got it. Sounds good. I see. I see that. Uh, okay. Um, juicy. Now, I just wanted to had a quick comment on Neo. One thing that people overlook is that Neo's workforce is insane. Like these guys are cranking out cars left and right. They have the ability. Like in no disrespect, in China, they this is true story. They work a lot harder than we do as Americans, right? So they they have triple the labor force. Um, they work five times harder. The point of the matter is, the point I'm trying to make is, I don't ever foresee Neo never missing delivery number, right? So over the long term, I do think, especially with the demand for electric vehicles, Neo is a great long term name, right? So if you're gonna, if you're in Neo and you're down on the shares, I would hold. I would honestly hold because you have that time on your side if you have the shares. Got it. Got it. That's uh, some good points there about the culture and the working environment. Um, I mean, I guess I do have, you know, the time to hold these shares. I'm not, I'm not doing great on the position, but it's not the largest. It's not by any means. It's 1% of my portfolio. So I can definitely afford to hold this and see what happens. I, I will give you an example. I was down on SoFi for so long in my comments, but you know, because of the fundamentals and how good it is, you, you see SoFi running now, I'm, I'm very green on the position. So same thing, man. You got the time, hold on to them. I hear you. I hear you. Um, exclusive. Hey, I just wanted to piggyback off of um, a firm. So, you know, when when we look at a firm, we posted a chart at ten twenty three. So, a firm is pretty much exactly where we expected it to be. You know, looking at the extension levels at the one forty nine point forty five. Once that level broke, it back tested perfectly to the previous all time highs. You know, we're, we're seeing that thing move to 160, then 175. Uh, obviously, the 175 area is going to be uh, a couple weeks, months down the road. But, you know, Affirm, it, 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 it's respecting the technicals perfectly. You know, we, we've had this back test on that um, descending wedge breakout back in uh, the end of September, early October. And since then, it's just, you know, once it breaks those, those extension levels, it's just you can't stop a, a stock that is just respecting these, you know, these levels almost to a penny, you know, so we're seeing it back test perfectly to the 1.414, you know, back um, last week, and that was a perfect confirmation of a, of a breakout. So, you know, we have these 150, 55, 60, and 70 calls that are just, they're all up, you know, that's how you hit these one, two, three hundred percent returns is by getting into these calls before everyone else catches on. And then when you when you get these positions, it, it's just, you know, it's just bread and butter. You know, we, we've been on a firm just like everybody else. Um, but the thing is, is believing in the uh, the technical side of it. You know, we we think, okay, well, we're going to take this position. It's got confirmation. It's got the perfect back test. Now we can have 100% conviction, and we're going to hold these calls even while they're negative. You know, 70%. The following week, they're up 170, 200%. So you know, that, and that's a, another confirmation of what he was just saying too, about holding things with conviction. You know, if you if you're doing the technical analysis the proper way. You can see these levels no matter what the news says, no matter what the current price action is. If you can see where it's potentially going to go, just have conviction behind your trades. Um, and, of course, secure gain. Got it. Also, Got Walmart's it. breaking that level, too, mentioned earlier. Okay. Uh, Gerg, a couple of comments. So, first off, Snap is just absolutely just massacring me right now. I have no no clue why it's doing this. That, that um, channel uh, breakout. It, um Rejected yeah, that top I, I of the channel. I think someone might know something about the majority because the volume, right? This isn't retail selling, right? I see is this, a million is this like a cut my losses moving. To... Is this a cut my losses type move right here? Because I'm down I mean, 35 percent. I, I wouldn't of the call. tell you that, but the yeah, with... they don't look good on your end. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Um, I also see so Jonah. Just Jonah bought into Snap at seventy four seventy five. He to bought see if the time to show that um he bought he he bought at seventy four seventy five to see if it would hold the twenty day moving average. 
And um, it didn't, right? It just broke right. So out. he, but he, he trades with tight. Two sixty one now. He, he trades with tight stops. So oh, I'm, it should be out by now and then. I'm guessing Jonah got stopped out almost immediately. I yeah. mean, so snap yeah. has great uh, a support at seventy two, and very very strong support at seventy. It might break seventy two to the left, but I think it will hold seventy bucks. So. If you will now keep a mental stop loss for Snap, I think if Snap breaks 70, I would get out of any okay. calls I have for Snap. Yeah, yeah, that would be a, that would be a pretty rough trend line. If it gets down that far, I'm already going to be so far down in this position. I guess I might as well. Also, how are you feeling about Upstart now? Uh, we're down less than 3% on the day. I know, I'm out. And I will only buy 700 bucks. I know, Upstart I know. Is dead to me. Okay, uh, while we're talking about AFRM, something is going on. It just went up. It's up 8.5% now on the day. Uh, the stock is flying. Um, so if you guys are almost like exclusive, are you planning on taking profits? Yeah, I've already scaled out. Um, I've had uh, 150s, uh, 160s, 170s. Um, I've scaled out and rolled up a few times. Um, yeah, I mean, a firm is just, it's just nothing but bull strength. It's just... You know, we posted a chart on the 12th, um, that pivot point at the all-time high, 146.9. You know, our target above that was 149.46 for confirmation, continuation higher. And, I mean, it's it's going to perfectly according to plan. So, I mean, we're we're holding. You know, I've got this on my – I only have about 110 names on my equity portfolio, and a firm was one that I added in the 60s, and I'm going to hold this thing until it's 500-plus. Okay. Okay. So real quick, I want to go into, uh, there's a segment that we try to do each week is trade of the week. So myself and stock market news where, uh, this segment is sponsored by bullish rippers. They give us some money to go ahead and buy a option. Uh, it could be a call, it could be a put, whatever it is. It's basically for the entertainment value for the audience, but also for us to, you know, learn by getting skin in the game. Um, so I think we're looking at a couple of ones here. Um, I'm intrigued by the square calls. Um, but I'm just going to assume that they're pretty expensive. Oh, they're not terrible. Um, so, if, you know, Gerg or Exclusive, any thoughts here on the Square calls? I have none, but whatever you buy, I will buy and do. And let's donate the money we make. How, how about that? Okay. All right. I'm down. So, but I want to make sure that we're making money if we're donating. Uh, no, no, me... Let's just buy a random call <laughs> and we, we put 50k in that. Uh, how far out should we go? Up to you. You're the man. Oh, I'm the man. Okay, well, I'm looking I'm looking uh, at the 29th because... quickly? Yeah. And throw this out there. Our trade of the week so far is about 0-3 or 0-4 or something like that. I think yeah, we're, we're trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, the full time is the lucky one because I am in the strike. The previous ones, I wasn't in that, so. Yeah, I mean, I would where's the flow? Just piggyback on your plays, go on one of them and see how it works out for us. We'll so, this, the square flow, right? Let me check Bloombug one second. They have a pretty good source. One second. Call, while, call. While so, it's square, that. I only see two big options. One is put for 200 that expires 17th of December. And I see a 255 call for 20 years of this month. That was 27,000. That's a nothing over 100k. Okay, so not a, not a ton of movement there. Uh, we don't have to. We, we, how about we buy a firm call? AFRM. AFRM call. Yeah. I mean, yeah. All of these hey. calls are of 100k. Someone just bought 190 calls expiring 17 of December for 280k. And this is the biggest, no, 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 my bad. So the biggest trade for the day for a, a firm was 900k and 149 puts that expired on 19th of November. So someone put in a million on that. And that went on the ask, so this person expects a big drop, or this might be just a hedge. You want to be really careful too, with uh, if you don't mind me interjecting, 
you got to be really careful too with um, option flow data. Although I do agree that there can be a ton of money to be made using it. I, I don't really per se. I just recently started using um, unusual whales and trade ticks just to kind of see what the hype is around. I base all my option trades on technical analysis 100% of the time. But these these flow tools, you know, one is delayed data, and two, people can be wrong on those. So, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I, I like to warn people before, yeah, if, you know, looking if at you, them. If you buy anything blindly, nine times out of ten, you lose money, right? You need to have other reasons too. Because even yeah. with the flow of what they use, the flow is huge to fit, right? You have people on the board sides. Some people think it's going to go up, it's going to go down. So, if you buy just based on the weekend of flow, most probably you lose money on that. Same as this. Because even the people who make millions, they, they're usually wrong too, right? If you see someone spending 5 million on AMC call, 100, like last week, right? Someone spent 4.2 million AMC 100 calls. And that expired worthless. So you can't follow them blindly. But I think if you know what you're doing, they can be very, very helpful. Yeah, like, um, for instance, a really good... Um instance in this case is Snapchat. So Snapchat, the flow was extremely bullish, right? For the first hour and a half, um, or hour I should say. And then, you know, we get into these, you know, um, Fibonacci levels and I'm a really big advocate for Fibonacci levels uh, just because of the trader psychology behind them. But when you approach the 0.618 and the 0.65, what's known as a golden pocket, you know, whether it's support or resistance, you know, when I see the golden pocket right below a huge channel resistance break from the um, end of July all the way until now, you know, it's failed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times to break that channel, and the golden pocket was right below it. So that was my sell point um, right over, right around the 78, um, 65 level. But, you know, as soon as it rejected that level, I said, nope, and I'm out. So I sold. And then, you know, you see the rest of the people that were following flow data. You know, a lot of people got trapped in those positions. And that was one that I saw one of my members post about, too. So I was kind of feeling bad about that. But, you know. So, I mean, I'm, I'm tempted by these AFRM calls. The thing is, so we're not working on the biggest budget here. I think that we have usually around $500 a month um, for this. And so we have to probably go weeklies. And then off these weeklies, we probably have to go up near this 170 range. Um, so, I mean, that... That's not like, I mean, there's, there's, there's actually very good volume right now, I would say on the 170 weeklies. Um, but it's, it's a scary trade to take because, you know, with the implied volatility and everything going on there, uh, what do you think exclusive? Yeah. You know, when, when you're looking at, um, out of the money options, so particularly, um, I day trade options, I swing options. So when I'm looking at these um, options that are out of the money, um, you want to be really, really careful because volume, you know, volume can be either way. It can be buy or sell, right? So when we're looking at open interest, we're looking, okay, so we can see how many contracts have been bought. We can look at the flow data to see bulk orders. Um, I do bulk orders too. So, you know, I, I, I know you can kind of follow those as well. But when you're looking at delta, that's high. When you're looking at implied volatility, that's high. And you're looking at something that's out of the money, a rejection at like, let's say 160, and it rejects and pulls back to 150, you're automatically down 40 to 50% on your option before you even get close to the end of the week. So theta decay is a very, very real thing. So you want to be careful getting out of the money options. Instead, bet with less money on something closer in the money, you'll pay more per contract, but your risk is gonna be a lot lower because you can roll up. You know, so if we're at 157 and you're betting for 170, why not get a 160? Once it moves up $2, scale out for profit, roll up to 165, scale out for profit, go up to 170. Now you have 170 calls, you've made profit twice or however many times you take it, doesn't matter, and you're playing with profits instead of playing with cash. So. You know, that's just one way to do it. Everyone has their own method. You know, I'm not saying my way is perfect, but I'll, I'm only going to get something out of the money if I'm using profits. Like my coin trade, I had 150s, 160s. Um, I'm sorry, coin, I'm getting jumbled. I got so many trades open. Um, so my coin, I got 285s, 
and then I rolled up the 300s with nothing but profit. So it, it's really important to make sure that you're getting out of the money options with less risk. So because you have a lower probability of it being successful, right? So that's why some people get deep in the money options in case they need to execute those for um, common stock. So there's a bunch of ways to manage risk, but the roll-up method is my number one way I use uh, my cash positions. So, you know, that's what I recommend, but of course everyone's got their way. Not My way is not perfect. So that's just my opinion. I think jumping on top of that, I feel like a big reason or definitely part of the reason we, we've lost money so far is, you know, obviously the stocks have not moved for us. And when they did, we didn't really take a profit. But I also feel like we've been getting these out of the money calls because we have the limited amount. Um, and I think it just might not be working out for us for, for that aspect. So I think we maybe either need to reevaluate whether it's, um, you know, like we did with Facebook. I think that one just didn't work for us where we maybe kind of go into a little bit of a bigger play earlier in the month and, and be more willing to spend it. Or, or possibly we could even take forays into buying common stock as well. Uh, I think that that could be an interesting thing that could uh, help us a little more and open up a lot more opportunities. Yeah, and I, I could definitely um... – I can definitely say so. I've done a thousand dollar account challenges. I tried to do a hundred dollar account challenges. It was just it was just too grueling for me to just sit there and do that while I'm operating my main account. But so the a thousand dollar option account that I started, you know, we got that over over I think three hundred and forty grand within a month, and that was one hundred percent by taking profits early on at five to twenty percent. You know, these fifty hundred percent returns, although they're possible. It's more luck than anything when you're starting with a small account. So, you know, a 20% return on a $1,000 account, you know, that's huge. Someone with a million dollar account, that's 200 grand. So the percentages are much more important to me when I'm building a cash account like that up to a 20, 30, 40, 50 grand account. I can't just jump in on that point. You always have to look at percentages, percentages in this game. That's so much more important than how much money you make. It's how much percentage return did you get because you have to risk money to get that. Um, so just in, in yeah. general, I think for new traders, for new investors, it's really difficult to be investing. And you know, if you're investing with $100 and you make $20, you can look at it, well, I only made $20. Or you can look at it you make, like you made 20%. 20%. And, and I think that that's important because you know a lot of people will come in the game and say, I don't have enough to invest. I don't have enough to in trade. But the truth of it is, yeah, you may not be making huge money right now, but if you put in the practice and you put in the work, and when you do have the real money, you're an experienced investor, an experienced trader, not someone new to the game making the same mistakes you made with $100. You know, you're, you're moving up the mistakes to make them with less money, and you're moving up the knowledge uh, to be when you have more money. It's just a win-win. So the earlier you can start in this game, you may not be making a bunch of money up front, but the lessons you're going to learn – are going to carry you for the future. Yeah, well, I would say it for you for this way. <clears throat> so coin 300 calls. Like spotting price. Sounds like a Jim. Sounds like a Jim Cramer trade. No. Uh, uh, he blocked me. <laughs> get me unblocked. <laughs> I personally have 300 dollar calls. But again, uh, over coin... the profit. Coin three hundred dollar calls. Yeah, this... Friday, like it's insane what I'm saying. I I don't think I can share, but if you DM me, I can share. You, I can share that. The volume is that is some nuts volume. Yeah, what that is what I'm what I hunt for. Um, in addition to volume, obviously, is you know you're looking at the open interest and you're looking at the volume and you're looking at the difference and the premium, and you're thinking to yourself, okay. So there's already over 9,000 in volume, um, or I'm sorry, in open interest alone, right? And then we have over, now it's, uh, at the time when I purchased, it was only around 16,000. But now you have, you know, the volume is increasing and people are buying above the ask. So when I see people making bets and they're sweeping over the cost to get into the contract, it's because they 100% want to fill their order no matter what happens, and they're willing to pay a little bit more premium to do so. Um, I particularly do it um, usually on the cheaper contracts, but I also do it especially when I have conviction on a trade. And sometimes I'll do it when I have a position that I'm just rolling up with profit because I could really care less if it goes to zero or 100%. It doesn't matter because it's profit. It's house money. 
Um, but no, definitely, uh, definitely just a cash, uh, profit cash position for me. All right, what do you think, Evan? It's it's at five hundred flat right now, four ninety five. Is this the move? Coin three hundred dollar weekly call. Uh, I'm down to test it out and, and give it a shot. Uh, I, I think it definitely could work. Uh, while we're in this segment, I do want to give one more quick shout out to the sponsors of this. The people who are allowing us to lose this money uh, without it being actually our money. Uh, Bullish Rippers, it's the Green Raccoon, it's Bullish Rippers right now. Uh, give them a follow. I personally tweet from that account. We're, we're less than 10 followers away from 6K, so it'd be really, really awesome if we could hit that on the spaces. But overall, Coinbase 300, um, you know, I, I'd definitely be down to test it out and see how it goes. We, I think that we would, w- okay. with that being pretty much all of our um, money for the month. I think that we maybe should kind of talk about what our uh, our downside uh, stop loss or whatever would be. I know, Gerg, I'm pretty sure it was you in the past who talked about setting your stop loss based on the Yeah, stock what's price. the stop loss? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, what does that company do? Are you breaking Yeah, I, you're breaking up. <laughs> no. That's all so, that's yeah, I'm, op- I'm open to like, a, I don't know, what are we thinking, like a 20% stop loss on this? I, I'm totally down for that, but I would love to ask some of the uh, the experienced traders we have up here. Um, you know, obviously we want we want to last in this game, and we won't don't want to get stomped out completely. Um, so it's it's got to be that balance. Do you think twenty percent is not enough of a downside? Do you no, think maybe we should go thirty? I, I think instead of looking at the options, look at the stock price. I think. So like I moved for- my. If this helps, I moved my. Um, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell. Um, so I moved my stop loss um, from 270 this morning. Then I moved it up to 277. Then I I, I use dollar. I don't use percentages. I use dollar based on price action. Um, then I moved it up to 283.42, and now my stop loss is sitting at 286.61, and that's a short term stop loss. If you're looking to swing, my stop loss is at 267.95 on my equity. So that's just my opinion. That's what I use. But I have two. I have a short term and I have a long term. But again, my short term is two eighty six point sixty one. It went up thirty dollars a call while we were talking of it. We're at five point uh, thirty five dollars a call. Five hundred thirty five now. So I might I might uh sit up. I might like wait. So Greg, what do you think? There might be a, a point to wait today for a few minutes. See, because it looks like right now we're kind of at the critical stage of the day where it's been. You know, it peaked a little bit, and now it's kind of like leaning down. Um, and just see if we can kind of get in at, at that five hundred. I mean, it was at one sixty at open. It peaked to nine fifty, almost ran nine x intraday back to nine five fifty. I think you might be better off waiting right now. Yeah, that's what I'm. Uh, okay, so this is I think what we're gonna very highly consider as our trade of the week. Although it's just went up like third, like. <laughs> I don't know, went up a decent amount just in the last like ten like five minutes, I guess it went up like ten percent. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that one. So if anybody else has any thoughts on it, feel free to DM those over to myself or Stock Market News. Those are the coin three hundred dollar weeklies. Um with that being said, I think we've made it through most of our segments. I want to give one more reminder that if you're trying to make a little bit of extra money today and you're like, how can I make extra money on the internet without having to do much? If you go inside the Wolf app and you post in there, you're automatically entered into a raffle every single day that you do that. We did $50 raffles this weekend. Um, I think we had like 100 to 200 entries, so your odds are pretty good. And that is the link to my bio. It's completely free. And all these, uh, most of these people up here, I think, are on the Wolf app. Luke's posting on there all the time. So I recommend, oh, and James, I see my boy James in the crowd. He's up there um, as well. So make sure that you're posting in the Wolf app to get entered into your contest daily. Even if you post like, good morning, hello, uh, you can post stock charts, whatever it is, uh, that'll be enough to enter you into the raffle. Um, so we've been contact winners and sending payments through Venmo and PayPal. Um, with that being said, and it's also my pin tweet. Uh, with that being said, Evan, you ready to move into some wrap up? Yep, definitely sounds good. Cool, all right, uh, Gerg, any closing thoughts? Nope, let's buy the coin calls. I might have, I might have, or might not have bought 200. You bought 200 no, of those I calls? might have, or might not have. I think you bought ah, 215 of them. Um, did you, are you saying you might or might not have just done that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I might or might not do it as well. Um, although I'm not buying 200 of them. That would be crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm not the baller that you are. 
Um, also, shout out on your new Lucid car. Are you excited for yeah, that? Yeah, thank you. I mean, they didn't give me a tape yet, so it might be a year or two. Fourth wheel. Yeah, right? yeah, you could be. You could be waiting. Even the I bought X a Model S, a Model Y too. Even that, I have to wait six or eight months, and even that might be delayed to a year. So, like, I think Tesla blows his earnings. Because all you people I know who have blown in the last six to eight months, they still have to wait almost a year if they bought it. Because the demand is so high, and they can't make enough cars right now. I think honestly, the, the delivery numbers, we we more or less know how this Tesla earnings is going to go. And yeah, they updated the every month, right? So even I think last Saturday or I think two weeks before, we got the updated ones and they blew them through the roof. So, and they said to do a million a year next year, right? I do think though that does, we've seen a, a really good run in Tesla stock. I think that possibly sets it up where the earnings have to, if they just beat. It, it might be looked at as bad. They have to be pretty big, I would think, in my opinion, because the expectations are higher than they were before. Yeah, it goes. I'm bullish on the company, but not on the stock. I have no track exposure to Tesla. Uh, I'm pretty and I won't buy company. Tesla right there. I still hold a lot of my shares, but I, I, I don't really have much, much plans to buy or, or sell at all based on this. I'm holding for the long term with it. But, you know, anytime we see a company running into a major event, I feel like we see this with Apple and their Apple events all the time and, and earnings all the time. You you buy the hype and then you sell the actual event. Um, it's just how it tends to go. Or at least right now. Absolutely. Also, we just got filled, by the way, at $500 um, for that uh, for that coin $300, to call. Not financial advice at all, especially not since we're doing it on a sponsored trade where we're not risking our money. Probably should be anti financial advice. I also think you have to um, take into account that we're 0 and 4 yeah. so far. So, yeah. there might be a call in here to fade us and, and do the opposite of it. Who knows? But we're, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might we might become like, there's like those guys who are on like uh, like TikTok or something where they'll put out like sports bets and everyone just fades them consistently. And we hope that we don't become that. But you know what? It's it's all it's all it's all fun and games. Hey, um, listen, for right now we're, we're, we're doing very small. It, so these, are small yo, yo, Wolf, these are small quantities. My average small quantities might or might not be five thirty. So keep that in mind when you buy. Wow. But, uh, well, my average is five. So look at that. For once, I got I got into you something before. Five? Girl. What that's, the hell? This, like that's yeah. cheating. I know. I know. Limit orders, baby. Let's go. But how, how um, did you get to fill out five? They're like three or four sellers. That's it. I don't know, man. I, well, because I'm not buying 215 contracts, you freaking baller. No, I, like... I, I thought I might have or might not have. So. But okay. I okay. It's running. It's running. 570. Damn. Yeah, we're up at 12% right now. Um, I'm on, and so maybe, maybe we just maybe we just know, cut I, and run. I, I've been right getting now. a lot of requests to do um options. Like I see it all the time, all over. Uh, I mean, it's everywhere on Twitter. People are doing option trades, um, on their accounts. We we like to keep our feed just TA, um, to keep it as helpful for the community as possible. But I might start doing one or two on Twitter just because we've been getting a lot of requests to do so. I don't know. Evan, do we cut and run and take the take take the win? How much are we up? We're up fifteen percent. Oh my god! Honestly, I, I think we, we just need about together. That. We need to see a okay. W in this. I'm throwing. Yeah, we need yeah, to we'll, see a W. I bought AD more. It's an exclusive it. trade. It'll be a W. All right, we're waiting on it. I'm also still holding my snap calls, which have been traversing. Thank God, and they're down like thirty percent today, thirty four percent, but they're not seemingly. You know, snaps kind of holding at like seven. Uh, not really. Can, can I just? I don't know. I'm going to see if those get any closer. I'd like to jump in and um, go in I, off of, I think it was exclusive's point, but, but just in general, um, you know, when you're a trader, uh, even an investor, but a, a trader especially, it, it is really difficult. You know, it, it is a full-time job that you have to put a lot of work in on the back end. You have to have a strategy and you have to really know what you're doing. If you come into this, this game, the trading game specifically, and just kind of half-ass it and don't really put any work into it, and kind of just buy stocks off of other people or just buy stocks, you are going to lose. It, it's just kind of a fact. The, all these people up here are, are talking about their trades. Uh, I, I think there's two important things to mention. You know, first of all, that 
there's a lot of time and effort and knowledge and learning and everything that went into the back end to get to this point where they're talking about this and it's super ongoing. You have to be willing to put in that work if you don't, like I said, you're going to lose. And I think that it's also really important to talk about that no investor, no trader in the history uh, who's done this for a prolonged period of time shoots 100%. It, it's impossible. You are going to have Except Nancy Pelosi. Except Nancy Pelosi, yes. When you have insider information and, and can uh, directly affect stuff, it, it does make sense that you could uh, shoot closer to 100%, so, but still probably not even at that 100%. Um, but it, it's just important to know that nobody shoots 100% uh, besides maybe insider information. And, and the entire game is about limiting your risks and, and maximizing your reward. That's what pretty much everything that every strategy, everything you could do is one of those two concepts and really kind of sit into there. And for some people, they need to be better at pushing their winners. For some people, they need to be better at limiting their risk. But but at the end of the day, like those have to be your main focuses. Um, understand that, you know, you could shoot 30 percent in, in a game with high reward and, and come out really, really on top and make a lot of money off. So just kind of. I think that just make sure you're putting in the work and, and don't be turned off right away if it doesn't go in your favor um, or even if you're not making money or not – when you if the majority of your trades don't go in your favor, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not making money. You just kind of have to frame your risk-reward relationship, which is I would say probably the most important thing when you get into this is you have to know both and, and make it in your favor, but, but overall learn as well. Sorry for rambling. It, it, it got there. No, all good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Luke, closing remarks? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on a little bit of that there. You know, it, it does take time. You got to put the time in, and you have to be willing to learn. I mean, for instance, um, what I do, my habit is I, I worked all weekend on a watch list to come out with a focus list that had 12 names. So it's probably, you know – um, in total, 12 hours worth of work to come up with a, a focus list for the week. Um, so you have to put the time in, um, but also, you know, you, you really have to know what you're doing. You have to learn technical analysis or learn your strategy, you know, know your strategy um, going into it. So if, you're, if your strategy is technical analysis based, um, you know, you better know your technical analysis in and out. So you have to, you have to study it. Um, don't be, just be piggybacking off other traders. Um, it really comes down to um, knowing in and out what you're doing, what you're trading, and how you're trading. Um, if you go in blind, it's not going to end well. Um, so my word of advice is, you know, if, if you want a technical-based strategy, um, focus on learning technical analysis first, and then go in and start playing with the market and trading around and figuring it out. Agreed. Agreed. Um, cool. Exclusive. Any closing remarks? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I agree with uh, what everyone's saying here. Um, definitely managing risk is the number one thing when you're trading in the stock market, which some people would consider a virtual casino. So, you know, just like there's a recipe for counting cards and blackjack, there's a recipe for making trades profitable. And that's by learning how to make the trade before it's made. Um, you know, securing gains, no matter how small, you know, I've had people, they, they ask me, why do you secure gains when you're only at $5 a contract? I said, that's money made that I didn't have 10 seconds ago. So no gain is too small for me. Even though I have a large account, I don't care how small the win is. A win is a win. And I refuse to take losses. And when I do take a loss, I try to minimize it to the smallest amount possible. Um, so you know, look for look for key breaks, roll up positions, roll down positions if you're short, and just use profit to make trades. You know, I spend my Mondays and sometimes Tuesdays doing everything I can to make profit. And then whether it's 500, 10,000, 100,000, I will only use my profit for the rest of the week so that my starting position, I've made money, I have money to put into my equity account. Um, and yeah, just, just securing gains and keeping losses small and learning your craft that that's education self-education is so important you know I've, I've i've got people that you know they've they've been a member for a while um with our service and you know they they i don't want to say that they follow blindly but there's some questions that get asked that you know those are some of the basic questions that you should learn 
um, in your, early in your trading career. So self-education, there are so many books, there's so many videos you've got to learn. I've only been trading for about 10 years, which is not a long time, but you've definitely got to educate yourself and you've got to learn what kind of trader you want to be. Absolutely. Evan. Awesome. No, listen, I, I appreciate us uh, getting to put on these things every single week. We do it every Monday morning, 920. This one ran for over two hours. This one was great. Uh, and then we have one every single Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, the sister stream to this spaces. Uh, Wolf, I know we have a couple other ones coming this week. You have that schedule out there. It got retweeted by Twitter spaces, which was pretty, pretty sick. Um, so check into his profile for that. And, and then just one more thing. Uh, I've said it a couple of times. The Bullish Rippers account, it's the Green Raccoon. They, uh, they sponsor the trade of the week that we actually, I hope we're still up on. I hope I, I'm not going to jinx it by saying this, but that we're actually not down on yet. Um, but pretty much that account, I personally tweet from it. It is one follower away from 6K. So if you want to be the 6K, uh, 6,000 follower for that account, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, one last thing. Uh, just thank you to all the listeners for coming in here uh, and making this space super valuable to put on. Um, you know, we keep doing this not because we just want to sit up here and waste an hour or two, but because we want to deliver uh, amazing, valuable content that people actually care about. So um, to, to the listeners, thank you for uh, obviously being in here. Uh, if you have anything you would like us to change, upgrade, whatever, uh, send myself or Wolf a DM, uh, and we'll hopefully look to always improve. And then finally, um, thank you to all my speakers for coming up here and joining in. Uh, and, yeah, hopefully everyone has a really, really great week. Absolutely. Um, definitely echoing those sentiments. We deeply appreciate the listeners who we know you take time out of your days, right? You might be at work. You might be doing something else. You could be listening to a podcast. You could be watching something. You could be just grinding. But you took your time to come in here and embrace your financial knowledge. You know, this is all about education. Myself and Evan, we're definitely newer traders. We try to bring in speakers that are significantly more experienced than us, people that have you know, depth and knowledge and an understanding of the market and investing. And then we just pelt them with questions and we do it out in the open. That's the whole goal. You know, I'm probably going to be on spaces for about 25 hours this week. Um, not kidding. Uh, probably around there. And, and it's not because, you know, I have a wealth of knowledge necessarily to share. It's because I want to bring together all these people into a free public forum so that everyone can learn from them. So that's what we're going to continue to do. One thing I still want to mention, I pinned this at the very beginning. Um, I am giving away an NFT today if anybody wants it. There is very few people that have entered. It is at the NF tickers. It is a NFT project based on stocks. We're giving away a C limited NFT today. Um, so that is one that is up there. So it's tagged up top. All you need to do is just like and retweet the post. You don't even have to follow the account. If you don't want to mess up your follower ratio, I don't mind. Um, and we're going to give that away. But right now there's only like five people entered. So you have great odds if you want to win that. Um, with that being said, I hope to see y'all howling with me on the Wolf app. I'm actually going to go post on the Wolf app right after this and uh, go chat with my marketing yeah, team we'll, as we plan we'll, up some more we'll ways to do it. Yeah. Check out the coin call. It just rubbed. And we are at 24% All right, now. Profit. I'm throwing this on out there. Let's calls. be one and four. Let's take it. Let's, let's, no, we'll roll up. Yo, Good. don't be a fish. Well, listen, this happened with Facebook, oh. though. This happened with Facebook. We were up, what, 40%? Maybe, and then we Bro, end up losing I'm, all. I'm up 23,000. <laughs> I'm not winning a single one yet. But, Gerg, you got, you got that serious know. money, that serious cash. We're out here on a, on a $500 budget. No, but it's been finance, right? Even if it goes to zero, why does that matter to you guys? It's free money. I guess. But it's, then I feel like we're just going to... He wants the track record. Yeah. Uh, we're thirty two percent now on it. Yeah, um, bro. Oh, I think I want hundred on this bad boy, bro. What the? Fuck? I'm a twenty eight, twenty nine k on this. It's uh, it's still moving on this. Uh, I I wonder if anyone else in the yeah, audience. When do we sell? Damn, I might be tempted to sell at fifty k. I need three more posts at fifty k. You need three more percent, Evan. We're sitting at thirty-five percent up right now. It's a hundred. It's. I mean, we bought a five hundred dollars call. Uh, I, I was down to sell it at up fifteen percent. Whatever happens here, I, I'm good with. If there's maybe like a trail yeah, stop, yeah. Well, like you if you said. listen to Evan, you would have lost ten percent of potential gains. So. 
Uh, it's at it's at thirty nine percent now. Gain. Do we just take it at forty percent? No, bro. We need it's at forty one percent. Okay, so here, here's the here's the funny here's the funny whoa, thing whoa. to consider. So like yeah, back whoa. when we you when we were talking about the position. You sell it with me. We we make money. We don't sell for pennies on a dollar. We take all what what is what. At least fifty percent on uh, this. Fifty percent many. Is this fifty? Okay, because we're at forty three percent right now. What were you saying, exclusive? I was saying so. If you were looking at the um at the roll up method, right? So the when we were talking about it, um, I just just to kind of see where it would be at. I played around with it and I bought uh, a couple of uh, two ninety five calls at six fifty, and I rolled up. Once they were up two hundred dollars a contract, they're now up three hundred dollars a contract, and now I've rolled up to three hundred dollar calls, and now I have three hundred dollar calls risk free, and I've already made five hundred bucks. So that was completely separate. I did that on my um, Robinhood stupid account. I just have that account for fun when I do small account challenges. But you know those six fifty to nine hundred. I mean that's that's a big win for a small account. So it was just um, that roll up method I was talking about. I th I could would totally be down to do the roll up method. We take take the profit here and then look to spend, you know, uh, a decent amount less on, on a higher up call. Uh, we maybe we could see how that that premium comes in there. Maybe we talk about that uh, off the spaces though. But I do think that you know sometimes you can be pushing for that large gain, but when you're shooting over four, I think it's and you have something up forty percent in an hour, whatever it was since we bought it, thirty minutes. Fifty minutes. Fifty minutes. So, here, here, so here's what I here's what I always tell um our members. You know, I have people that ask me more than people that ask me for calls that are working. Should I cut my loss when when a position is down thirty or forty percent? When instead, you know, people should be thinking, okay, my position is green. Why would I cut it off? If you have more than one contract, scale out and at least leave one runner that's usually paid risk free. And just let the trade continue to work. You know, if you have a three hundred dollar call, that means that eventually you are looking at it and thinking, okay, the stock can potentially go to three hundred and get in the money. When you think about where it was at today at the high, it's still not at that level. And if it breaks the high of day, then it has potential to go to three oh three or three oh five or three oh nine. So, you know, it's really important to let I, what I specifically tell people is cut the weeds and water the flowers, not the other way around. I'm I'm looking at it and thinking 50% is kind of hopefully the the golden number here where we're very comfortable with the gains that we made. Yeah, 50% you're risk free, man. If you got two contracts, sell one, let the other one ride for free. So we only bought we only bought one contract because our budget was like $500 and it was a $500 contract. Um, so we're holding one $500 contract right now. It's up 41%, which is $205. Uh, Evan, what do you think about fifty percent or forty percent? I think you put in a sell order for fifty percent, and we see if it hits. So no, we'll, we'll hundred percent. Hundred percent. Don't listen to him. Devil, listen. This is the devil 100%. and the uh, whatever the other thing on your shoulder. Listen to me. The, the angel. angel. Yes, that was that was. I no, should have gotten that out. He told you to sell fourteen percent. If you listen to him, you would have lost thirty percent potential gain. So. <laughs> Wolf, we we know how this is gonna go. It's gonna get up to. 60, 70 percent, maybe, and then we're just going to end up losing most of our money, and we're going to have a talk on Thursday, Wednesday, talking about we should have taken the profit. Let's, let's. I'm fine with the roll up. <laughs> the wolf, no pain, no gain. I'm. I, so we're sitting at 39 percent right now. I'm good with 50. I, I like yeah, the. No, no. I like 59 percent. We sell one fourth. <laughs> well, so here's another way you can okay. look at it too. So since since the past five minutes, I've rolled up my stop loss. From what I said before at the um, 286.67, I've now rolled it up to um, 286.99. So I'm going to keep moving up my stops that are far enough away from where the price is short term, but it's not going to kick me out of my position if you know market makers do a quick stop loss are, hunt. But you got to remember too, we're getting close to lunch, so a lot of people are, are those comments. Down. Are those comments? If you're rolling up that stop loss, oh, com price. I thought you said comments. I was like, well, I, I think that it's a comment. <laughs> um, no, so these are for my short-term um, option trades. So, like I was saying before, on my common stock, my stop loss is at two sixty-seven ninety-five, and it's going to keep going up each day that it, the price action changes, and you know, it, it never stays the same. Sometimes I change it two or three times a day. Okay, that's that's interesting. So, what platform are you trading on? Uh, I use E-Trade and E-Trade Pro. 
Okay, got it. I do have a new trade tab open as well. That's where I have my upstart, which I haven't sold, Gerg. Um, but we'll see what happens. How much are you there. off? It's not a ton. Oh, an upstart? Yeah. I am currently up 185%. Yeah, so I was up to 80% on Friday. I didn't sell. And now when I sold, I was only up to 28%. So I'm all out. And like I said before, I will only buy upstart. Add hundred bucks or under. Wow, only two hundred twenty percent gain. No, no, it's I like mean, I was up to eighty, right? If I sold on Friday and it wasn't, <laughs> if I wasn't greedy, and I wanted three hundred percent, I messed out on fifty percent, like forty more percent there. So. Okay, okay, all right. Um, Evan, uh, we're uh, I'm just trying. To, I'm like willing this thing through the screen to go to fifty percent. No, so. no, no. Um, yeah, no, you, not but... 50. We sell one fourth at 69 percent. But we can't sell uh, unless Robin had introduced oh, his fractionalized options in the one, next two bro. minutes. I'm going to buy 100. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, 100? Yeah. I wish we had 100 cash. Well, I'll put, I mean, I'll put it like this. Though. Here's another way to look at it. And Where's the price of Coinbase sitting right now, short term, intraday from the high? Like ten bucks, I don't know. It it's sitting right now. It's sitting on the golden pocket. So now it would be either the worst time or the best time to sell. It's like a fifty fifty chance. You know, if it breaks above and keeps going, we might see the high of day. And then once you see the high of day, you might get a little bit more of an extension. So you know, you you just gotta think about it. Okay, where can I look at it in a longer time interval? So right now, short term, it looks really good to sell here. But if you're holding it for the day. It's just getting warmed up. So, there, you know, I like to cycle between the one, three, five, ten minute candles and just kind of see where things are at. But if you're looking at it from the high of the day and you're doing a simple Fibonacci retracement, it's at the golden pocket right now. So that's a really strong support slash resistance level. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens here. I think that it's still, it's still, it's just moving right around that point. It's at around 40% upwards. I'll keep in touch with uh, Stock Market News. We'll see what happens. Um, it's, it's very yeah, volatile. When you close the trade, definitely tag me so I can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll let you, we'll let you guys know. It's, it's at around 38% now, 39%. It's just fluctuating there. So I think we are, we are going to hold for a second and see what happens. But uh, regardless, let's let's get out of this one green. Let's, that's, no, no, that's, um, not not you know, now, maybe in, at some point. Yeah, in some point in the future, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a reminder, the reason for everybody, might, the reason... I might not have bought more, and I might or might not have 300. You're, you're, you're crushing it. Um, the reason I'm just telling everybody why I'm looking to get out of this so quick is because of it's a weekly and that there's just massive, um, you know, theta that's going to kind of crush you each day that you hold this. Um, that's just the reason why we're looking, I think, to get out so quickly. If this was something where it was like, oh, you know, we have a month or two and we were up 40% on the first day, we might say, okay, well, let's, you know, keep this riding. The only reason why we're looking to get out so quick is just because um, when you're trading options and they're weeklies, you can get smashed. Hence what's happening to my uh, Snapchat one right now. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for today. Evan, anything else you want to add? Um, nothing too much for me. Uh, I would love to throw out there that if the uh, thing that we're up 40, 50% on uh, turns into a big loss, I will be upset. I would love to maybe set a stop loss somewhere, but whatever happens, happens. Um, once again, I appreciate everyone for joining in. I love how this lad, we were, we were going to end this like 20 minutes ago, and then we just had such great discussion going forward, which I, I love. I love taking the angel on your shoulder to uh, your Gavin's devil there. Um, I think you should pick me. Uh, and, and yeah, I appreciate the spaces and everyone joining in. Absolutely. We'll continue to keep in touch on this one. Everybody, appreciate y'all hanging with us. We ran over two and a half hours today, and I will be back on spaces at 6 p.m. EST today. Oh, crazy space. Y'all are not going to want to miss this. Um, massive lineup. It's going to have Brian Shannon, who created anchored volume weighted average price uh he's he was amazing we're going to be putting up his charts we're going to have jake wajastic who runs a trend spider account he's going to be up there uh ben from pattern profits is going to be there and richard 
uh, Mogwin from uh, Trader Lion. So that's going to be at 6 p.m. EST. And then at 8 p.m. EST, I'm going to have another space, probably back to back with those. And that's going to be trading social sentiment. So we're going to do that with Chatter Quant. Um, and Chatter Quant, they basically do like natural language processing and stuff like that. So, you know, just keep in, keep in the loop. We're going to have a ton of these stuff. Uh, if you're not already following their speakers, make sure you are. And if you want to be seeing all these spaces and you're not already on my calendar, feel free to just DM me. Hey, I want to be added to the calendar with your email and I will add you to the free Google calendar. Nobody can see your information. Um, and I'm happy to add you all. Yeah, well, uh, I would love to ramble thanks. for one more second yeah. and just re-echo your point and give everyone the opportunity to follow all the speakers we have up here. Uh, they're all amazing. We appreciate them so much for joining in and giving us such great um you know, content to you guys. There's a couple other people like, let me just really, Juicy, I requested Juicy to come back up here. We are done, but just so that if, if anyone likes him, he was up here for a little bit, definitely give him a, a follow as well. Uh, and, and yeah, I appreciate everyone. Back to you, Wolf. All right. Uh, that is going to be it for today. Wishing everybody health, wealth, great success, and I'll hopefully see y'all in about six hours. And also, you know, if throughout the day you're trading anything and you see these option trades and they're looking good, Feel free to go ahead and just, uh, you know, tag me in any of those once you tweet them out. Um, keeping my eye on stuff. And also, there's some people in my comments asking for my thoughts on some specific stocks. Uh, I will probably, if it's something I don't look at often, just say, you know, not not my thing because I'm not really giving out um, super strong analysis over here. But, uh, yeah, appreciate everybody who reached out. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.